All right, good evening, everyone. I'd like to call to order the Board of Assessors meeting for Wednesday, August 7th, 5 p.m. Uh, the first thing I have to do is ask if anyone other than Blake Cam is recording this evening. Okay, no one is recording. Um, there is a section for public comment, and I know people want to make public comments, uh, but what I would ask is just let me read a couple of other agenda items into the record, um, and then we're going to, uh, agenda item number seven is discuss and up an update on the waterfront valuations, which I'm assuming is why most people are here. Is anyone else here for any reason other than to talk about the preliminary tax bills on, on the waterfront? Okay. So uh, the this is more so housekeeping for the board. Um, we have some minutes from our July 16th meeting that um, have been prepared and um, we needed to sign off on, but we need to take in a vote that we approve those minutes. I'll entertain a motion. So moved. I have a second. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Motion Aye. carries. And we had some motor vehicle um, and real estate monthly reports to sign along with some invoices for the department, which I believe we have all taken care of at this point. So now on to agenda item number seven, uh, to give the town an update on the waterfront valuation to, and uh, which obviously are pertain to the um, preliminary tax bill. So I'm assuming most folks have seen the statement that came out early this week, but uh, for the record, I am going to read this in just in the event that no one has actually, that someone has not seen it or read it. Uh, dated August 5th uh, from the Board of Assessors, um, the following is a statement from the Board of Assessors. The Lakeville Board of Assessors Office is reporting to the community that they have been notified of an error made by a vendor contracted by the town to assist in the preparation of tax bills, which caused an incorrect reclassification of property tax bills for approximately 200 waterfront properties in town. Regional Resource Group RRG notified the Board of Assessors that a clerical error reclassified waterfront properties on first and second quarter FY25 tax bills. First quarter tax bills were due on August 1st, and those impacted who have paid their bill may have overpaid due to the error. The company acknowledged its mistake to the town. All impacted property owners will receive a notification from the town in writing in the coming weeks to remedy this situation. All impacted property owners will receive an adjustment on their third and fourth quarter FY25 tax bills ref reflecting the corrected overage. The Department of Revenue will certify property values in the fall prior to the issuance of the third and fourth quarter tax bills. Board of Assessors <laughs> will be meeting on Wednesday, August 7th, which is tonight at 5 p.m. in the Lakeville Library located at 4 Precinct Street and will be able to address any questions or concerns the residents may have. Members of the Board of Assessors wish to apologize for the inconvenience an undue financial strain RRG's era has caused property owners. So uh, I do want to make a couple of additional comments, then I'll ask fellow board members if they have anything to say, and then I will open it up for questions or comments from uh, those in attendance tonight. So um, listen, that was a letter that was drafted by a PR firm. So I'm going to be plain and simple. We have a vendor that we contract with that is responsible for taking care of us, uh, reclassifying and assessing the values. The process the vendor is using is a process, as we have said in the past, that is dictated by the state we're supposed to follow. And the real issue is the process isn't complete yet. The vendor left a file open that shouldn't have been left open that we just came to find out about over the past few days, the end of last week. <laughs> With that file being left open, the tax bills, the preliminary tax bills, grab the information from that file that was incomplete and tax bills get sent out ahead of time. So the best analogy I can give you is if you have a Word document that has a certain letter that you've been using for years and you're going to update that letter, you should save the original letter. If you forget to save the original letter, then the unfinished letter goes out and then you have a big problem because you have something that's inaccurate that went out. In essence, that's what happened. And the vendor did it. I have spoken to the uh, owner of the company um, on a couple of occasions. Um, they 
not that it means anything to anyone in this room, but they do express their apologies for the error. They are taking care of the situation internally with the individual who made the error. In addition to that, I'm going to do my best to explain this, and we will put something out um, so pe folks can, you know, see it and read it and understand, you know, what they're going to do in the meantime. Eventually, as we said in the past, your assessment values will come to an end, as everyone's in town will, at some point in the fall. Um, usually it happens in November. We have told them we need it done by the end of September so, we, so folks will know their values in advance of your second quarter bill, which is due November 1st. Okay. In the meantime, what's going to happen is, again, unfortunately, there is no way, let me, re let, me, let me reference this, there is no way for us to undo what has been done. We've had conversations with the DOR, DLS, which is, um, uh, uh, which is part of the state. We've had conversations with the tax collector's office. There's no way for us to undo those at this point. There's no way for us to cut a, a refund check for the difference between what should have gone out and what hasn't gone out, it will correct itself in the third and fourth quarters. So unfortunately what's happening is you're, you're top heavy on your payments. They will correct itself to whatever the, the new reassessed values are. And we will know that prior to your second quarter bill being due. Unfortunately, that's not gonna make any difference on what the tax collector is expecting to receive in the second uh, quarter. What RRG has offered to do in the meantime is we obviously know the 200 plus or minus properties that were affected if you are in a position where you cannot make that payment where it's a financial financial burden they have offered to whatever the difference is remember you were always going to at least get taxed what your assessed value was last year on the third and fourth quarters of last year so whatever that number is versus whatever the additional amount is due to that error if you don't make that additional amount of payment, what happens is the town starts accruing interest on you. They will pick up the interest payment for any tax owner who has running into a situation where they cannot afford to, to make that difference. Uh, and then obviously it will reset itself for the third and fourth quarter. So I apologize if that sounded a little confusing. Um, please ask away and in regards to that, we'll try to be as clear as we can. And like I said, this was a conversation um, I've had with the owner of RRG and, you know, we literally figured this out this afternoon that that was what they're willing to do. Uh, we will make sure that that gets posted and the staff internally at the assessor's office knows. So when the next quarter's bills come due, again, if it's an undue strain to, to any of the property owners, they will, they will pay the difference, not the difference, they will pay the interest on the difference in the amount of the uh, additional taxes that are being charged at this point. I'm not sure if I missed anything. Something else may come to mind. I will I will definitely share that with you. But in the meantime, I don't know if you guys have any comments or anything you want to. just reiterating that the values. They're not necessarily going to go back to. The values, just so everyone's clear, and I think what Dave's reminding me of, the values are not set at this point. So. What you have in, in your hand at this point is a preliminary bill that is inaccurate based on inaccurate um, assessed values. <laughs> when the town finishes reassessing everything, they are not automatically going to go back to what they were last year. They never do. Everyone's assessment changes from one year to the next. Anybody who's looked at their uh, you know, values of their property over the course of time, they never literally exactly stay the same. So whatever the true assessment should be is what we will turn around and the process will kick out in the fall. So the point is if you had a property that was worth 100,000 last year and it's up to 400,000 this year, which is too much, it's not gonna go back down to 100. It may come back down to 200 for argument's sake. It will settle where it's supposed to settle. So we just wanna make sure everyone is clear that it's not gonna turn around and wipe out any additional value that was going to automatically happen anyways. The process that's been going, that they're going through is the correct and normal process. The real issue is timing. They turned around, made, an act, made a file active, which grabbed the number that was inaccurate. And in a lot of cases, it's higher than it was supposed to be. So it will come back to where it's supposed to be, but it's not necessarily going to be where it was prior to. Your, your number is not necessarily going to be the same as it was last year from a valuation standpoint. So. 
I think probably the best thing to do at this point is if you have questions or clarifications, which I'm sure you do, or you want to, you know, make any comments, um, <coughs> podium's there. And any time you're ready. I know, I, I know, you're ready, you're, you're in your starting blocks there, so no, come on up, no, come on up. No, 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 I'm, 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 I, I'm, I'm really... Do me a favor, do me a favor, only because I can hear you, but you're on light cam, so you got to stand up over there so that yeah, way the mic can pick it up. So. Oh, I, I, I give you guys comment, you, you did a great job. Well, I don't know if we did a great job. Now listen, we're doing when you our do best. a good job, I tell you. When you do a bad job, I tell you too. Okay. Name, just all you guys, remember anybody who comes up, just name and um, address for the record. Vincent Toyani, 24 Langley Spine. Hey, the only questions I have, now I got my tax bill for the last three years. And my house has been going up every year, okay? And I know you said, you know, if it was like 100,000, it might be 200,000. Well, I'm not satisfied with that because my house is over assessed. Because last year, I got three properties that were sold on the water. Kind of compelled all of mine, you know, acreage wise and stuff like that. Two of them were under 500,000, and one was 550. Now, my house last year was six, 618,000. And I, which, it went up 50,000 on the year before that. And I was comfortable with it. You know, I understand we have to pay more because we're on the wall. But every time I had a bank come over or appraise my house, they appraised it with houses are not anywhere near the water. And they said to me, okay, your house is worth $50,000 more because you're on the water. So when they appraise it at 300, mine is worth 350. So this is the only formula that I'm, that I'm getting at. Okay? It was <coughs> in 2022, it was 518. 2023 to 24, I mean the 20, 23, 22 to 23. So it was 20, 20, 21 to 22 was the first appraisal that I got. This is what I got, you know, on paper that I can talk to you about. In 2022, 23, it was 560,000. 2022, 3 and 24, it went to 6 to 18. So they've been raising my prices. Well, where does this stop? I mean, he, I talked to Mr. Goldman, and he said to me, well, you know, we know it's overpriced. We might drop it at 800000 No, that's not, that's not fair. What I raise my, my, my taxes $2,500 a year. What, what I can, the way I can answer that question for you, the best I can answer that question for, is when the new valuations come out, when the, when the process is done, you always have the opportunity, if you're still unhappy with it, to file an abatement. And I would encourage anyone, if they're unhappy after everything gets settled in the fall and you see your new number, to file an abatement. That's, re that's, that's the only process. There's nothing we can do to change the process of coming up with it. I agree with right. you guys. You guys right. are doing a pretty good job so far. If you're not, I'll tell you. What I'm telling you, it's not a threat or anything, okay? My house is $618,000. If it doesn't go to $618,000, I'm going the state, and I'll go above that because that's overpriced. My house is assessed almost at a hundred percent. No, the, just you know, I the process. Like is, the process is if you're not happy with the number and oh, you abate it sense. with us, and we still don't agree with you. The process is you're, you, you're supposed to go to the state. The state's set up to have that to say if we're, if we're basically screwing up and we're over assessing it, they will tell us you're wrong and you need to change it. That's think, the way the system works. Well, but, uh, I think something that a lot of people aren't aware of, and I understand if, you're, if you felt like you were mistreated, Not mistreated. you want to blame or point yeah. things out. That's the one thing, one of the very few things that the three of us up here actually have some control over in this process is to help taxpayers that feel they were over over yeah. assessed and we have a process for that that we have some control over yeah. well, like I said when I when I submit the thing in the appeal at the end of the year I mean the first of the year I'm paying my dad my dad is away this supposedly and I'm going to give you three houses this old the family of my house that's exactly what we need and this is what you need mm -hmm. but I also got real estate that will give me and you know a piece of paper this that they will, have, they will go and get it notarized, but Mr. Goldman says he won't take it, he'll throw it away. Fine. I, I already spoke to my lawyer. If he wants to throw it away, throw it away. Then I'll just go to the state, because I'm going to have records of everything else. For the record, 
Mr. Golden can't throw anything away. If you submit it to us, it gets to us. Whether we use it or not, I can't tell you until we have the file in front of us. But I'm just, for everyone who knows, Mr. Goldman works for the town. Whatever you give him has to come to us. So I'm going to just interrupt you for one second, only because the librarian handed me this, this note, and I don't want to upset the librarian. I've, I've upset enough people, I'm sure. Blue Ram Truck, plate number Z. 2Z MA50. You need to move your pocket on the grass and you can't ruin the sprinklers. So, I'm the bad guy. We know who it is now. Your keys are over here. Hold it. Keys. Sorry, everybody. I had to work for five o'clock meetings, so work so well. Okay, no, I, I think I accept that. So the only other thing I have that question that I that you said if you interest is stuff. Because if you get one more interest, that means you're not paying you you second quarter, right? Correct. And if well, you're not well, paying well, you're, no, you're gonna pay what you paid last year. Well, well, you you're, you're, okay. you're, you're, so you the difference so you would have to pay what you paid last year. Okay. Yeah. I gotta say now. Now because I was letting myself in it. They're telling me I have to have everything paid, but they're saying they're gonna take care of the interest rate. Yeah, yeah, everything, everything, everything has to be paid at the abatement time. So what'll happen is, if you had a five thousand dollar bill this year and last year it was three, and the difference is two, and you don't pay the two, RRG will pick up the interest and not paying the two. But remember, your third and fourth quarter tax bill is going to come out the first of January, so everything will settle at that point. And if that two should have only been 500, it's going to get incorporated into the remaining. Yeah. You need to make sure you have your taxes paid for the February 1st in, in yeah, full no, at that I, point. My get paid to yeah. the bank, so yes. my bank's going to pay whatever that it went up the last two yeah. quarters, you know. Right. But my tax rate was $1,600 a quarter. Now it's $2,900 a quarter. Right. But the bank's just going to pay that automatically. I can't call the bank and say, the bank's no, always give them gonna, $1,600. The bank's always going to pay you tax and insurance no matter what. Okay, so, thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? So you guys know what you're talking. I haven't even looked at this yet. I've I just had this printed. Seen You've seen this. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So this is this is what happened in Winnipeg. Yeah. Not with our idea. Same same exact thing happened. It wasn't our idea. It, it, it was our idea to begin with. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Mike Nashwardy is the chief of uh, I want to thank. Representative Orell for showing up. He's actually been working with me pretty good for the last couple of weeks trying to figure this out. Um, I'm not good at this, but first off, you guys, kudos for you admitting that there was a mistake. But if you remember when we had the meeting last time, we were all saying there's an issue with the formula. And everybody was saying there's nothing wrong with it. It's recal recalculated. Re we classified the, the neighborhoods. That was wrong. I had a probably a 30 minute conversation with Harold, the owner of the company. He explained the whole thing to me. It was 100% their fault. He knows it. He just found out about it today. How he didn't know that his company messed up like this a month later to me is not good. I told him that he should have somebody here to represent him or a, a written letter. He said he was in the he wasn't able to get out here, but he did tell me that he gave you guys a letter. Can you release that letter to us and read it to us? That Haral gave yes. us the letter? Yes. Haral did not send a letter. He to said us. he sent you guys a letter, but he didn't have anything for us. Uh, the only additional information I have is David Golden had sent a letter to the select. Uh, basically the uh, town administrator and the select board outlining what had happened, which is what got transposed into the incorporating the Board of Assessors. But Harald himself has, has not sent has sent the letter. And okay. Harald was involved in uh, some conversations over the past few days. You are correct. Harald did not know about, nobody knew about no, this I, until I, the I, end I, of last I, week. Yeah. My, my other question is how could this not set off some sort of a red flag when there's such a massive draconian increase in taxes to such a small percentage of the community. It, it doesn't make any sense that nothing would say, boom, stop, we need to relook at this. Uh, I mean, I know I, I shut it out a couple of times last week. 
why can't we get a third party to come in here and, and double check and, and it was all shot down, we don't need that? Well, this company right here went in, RIG did do this, but it was a few years ago, to Lunenburg. The same, same exact thing happened in Lunenburg that just happened to us, word for word. They went up 135%. They fought, they fought, they fought, they got it squashed. Why are there no stock gaps for this? It, it just doesn't make any sense. So I'll make a couple of comments. Uh, Ludenberg was a uh, was a client, I guess, of uh, RRG. Yes. RRG has not been in Ludenberg for five. It, uh, but RRG, far, RRG set up years. the system over there, and they use the same system. And that I don't know what went wrong, but if you look at, because I talked, I had a long talk with Nate that made up this report, and he is sure that the same thing happened. Well, so, this report, and, and I have, I, I'm not going to say, I, I just saw it earlier today, I'm not going to say I read through it with a fine tooth comb, but this report, if, from what I've seen, is referencing the final valuations and that they were incorrect. Yes. Correct. So, what we really need to do um, is we need to see where the final valuations come out when it's all done. Like I said earlier, the problem here is they're going through a process which needs to, which needs to be gone through. In, they grabbed the information from the process early because they left that file open. This is not th yeah. these numbers that you have are not the final numbers for, for, for your assessed value. Lunenburg. Lunenburg, it was the final numbers that. Right. Y yes, but same company, sa mistake. same company, That's same mistake, same lakefront only. It's just too many coincidences. Coincidences don't make sense anymore. They really don't. Um, in my opinion, and I think everybody else would agree, we need a third party to come in and look at this. I think this gentleman, Nate, from MFS, is the person to do it. I probably talked to him for at least an hour. He is thoroughly 100% sure that he can fix this problem like that. So why are we going to mess around with RRG, letting them try to fix their own problem, trying to police themselves, when we really should have a third party come in and look at this? He did the same exact thing in the universe. Uh, we need a third, we need a clean, fresh set of eyes. Mm -hmm. We really do. Because the last time, whether you guys did it or not, there were a lot of misconceptions, misspeaks, or however you want to say it, but a lot of things that were said were not true. We can legally use a paid appraisal for the abatement. You guys specifically said you will not accept it. That is wrong. That's right. You guys raised the taxes improperly, the wrong, using the wrong year, doing it at the wrong time, you pushed it through. We all put this uh, before you guys, and everybody said it's state regulation, and all you guys did was push it off on the state. You, you can't do that. You guys are the assessors. You're all the ones that are heading up what we're paying for our property taxes. We are relying on you. You work for us. You're supposed to represent us. We have got nothing but bad representation from all three of us. You guys did good tonight. You came up and said you guys messed up. but. That meeting three weeks ago, you guys did nothing but put us down and try to cut us to stop talking. It was not right it was, at all. It was three hours and 45 minutes. Of but everything fun. that we said, you said, oh, no, that's the state's fault. The state, re state regulates this. State regulates that. Well, the state does heavily regulate this whole process. I understand that. That's, that's how the DLS got involved, because I th sent an email. Yeah. Okay, that's what triggered this. Okay. We, we need to get somebody in here that's not from Lakeville, not from RRG, to go over this and say this is where they were wrong, this is how we're going to fix it, and this is how we're going to do it from now on. We need a, we need a backup, some stop gap, so this will never happen again. Property ta properties have gone up. Yes, I know that. Inflation is through the roof, around 30%. But you can't expect people on a fixed income to come up with another six or seven thousand dollars in, in a month and a half. I'm a two, two, two income household. We make pretty good money. I'm going to have a hard time doing it. It's not fair at all, period. Right. <laughs> Do we ask for a recall, you guys? I don't know. If you guys can step up, take hold of what you guys did and what you guys said was right and correct it, then we might be able to get through this. 
But we need transparency. There was no transparency whatsoever with what anybody up there said, especially Dave. Because Dave said the formula works, the formula works. Dave peed around with the formula, because that's what Harold told me, and had the wrong inputs. And that's how we all just got our taxes doubled. Now that we have to, now we're forced to pay that double money, money, even though you guys messed up. So just do you a, guys, a, hold on. Do, do you, you guys, you guys are paid, correct? Lavishly. Yeah. Fifteen. It, it doesn't matter. You guys are getting paid, right? Just, I'm going to repeat what I said at the last meeting. John Blank lives on Long Pond. I have a house on Long Pond. Some of my best friends live on Long Pond. I'm a community member. The last thing I want is to piss off a bunch of my friends and neighbors. There is zero incentive for that there, to happen. There was not one person my, that can I finish? pissed off last week. Okay, that's fine. What incentive do we have to screw ourselves and to put ourselves in this situation? None. We're here, we're here to try to help. And I understand when someone's frustrated, you got to reach out. And we have to, as public servants, we have to allow people to express. But at the same time, I'm still a person. Right, and I feel like I know I hear all the chatter. There's some nefarious stuff going on with the board. No, 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 no. That, that, that's not what I mean. It's well, baloney. Okay, we that's, don't set the rate. We don't that's collect not what any I'm extra money. But we're we're supposed to look at those rates and yeah. stuff. No, so they, we, don't, we don't see that. We don't see that. We don't see because that. they messed up. We don't. They, they don't nobody. We don't. We, we don't see that. When our, when our own tax bill. His tax bill That's went up. 50%. His tax bill went up forty-seven percent. My tax bill went up seventy-six percent. Granted, not all of my property is in Lakeville. I get to pay taxes to Freetown and Lakeville, but the percentage was seventy-six percent to me, forty-seven percent to him. So what in the heck would we do that to ourselves for? I'm not, uh, upset, yeah, not saying that you, you shouldn't should should be upset, but that, that, no, that, that's not. I'm not saying that you guys did this on purpose. What I'm saying is... Well, you when said we, at the last meeting we, we deflected and we didn't answer any questions. You, you, and, but you did. You guys, there was a lot of deflect. All I heard was state regulation, state regulation, state regulation. That's, that's not true. What we were asking is, can you double check these numbers? And you're saying, no, everything's right. That's what no, the state No, we didn't say is. they were right. We said there's a process. And it but, does, and it's, it, it's, it seems backwards in a sense, the way the state requires it, because you have to start collecting money for the town to operate. And the data is not all there. That's one part of the factor. And the second one is he screwed up and used so the wrong why, data. But so we didn't, why, why we didn't know we... that at that point. That was not brought to our attention. The three of us are not pleased and happy that we have oh, to stand up here like none idiots of us are. and not know all the, all the information, all the accurate but, information. So, so we, now we know that they literally made a mistake punching something in, however it happened. Why are we still having to pay that money, even though we know it's wrong? Because they're you're putting, but you're, hold on, you're putting an undue. How many, how many people on fixed income can afford another thousand dollars? They can't. They don't have that. So where are these people supposed to get the money from to pay that? That they're going to get back at the end of the bill, six months, nine, you know, nine months down the road. They don't have the money now. So, so now, by the second quarter, they don't have to pay. They pay but we're paying it right up front now. It's done. It's August. It was due August 1st. Right. But we still have to pay the second quarter. Right. But the second quarter, RRG has offered, you pay your, your pay taxes based on last year's, they will pay the interest on the difference, and everything will should even out in the third and fourth quarter. Yeah, doesn't that mean you have a mortgage yeah. that's Hang on, hang on, one at a time, because yeah, then no one's going to be able to hear what you're you saying. Know, the, so, that, that's all well and good for somebody that, that can pay the credit. Mine is in my mortgage. Now my mortgage is going up, $500 a month or whatever it's going to be, that I have to come up with that I didn't have to come up with three weeks ago. Right. In the middle of gas is $5 a gallon, bacon is $7 a pound, we I, can't afford everything as it is. I hear you. Unfortunately, we can't control gas and bacon no, no, and, I understand and whatnot. That. And, and, but, I, but I can appreciate your point. And all I can tell you is, as Dave said, we're not happy that we didn't have the information. And we, you refer to the process as, is, is wrong and whatnot, and Dave was entering in information. That's all really irrelevant. The problem is he kept the file live. You can enter in whatever you want and tweak around with it, try, try to work this through, because that's the process to get to where the number should be at the end. There is only one reason we're here right now, and discussing this, I should say, right now, is because he kept a file active. 
That's it. So, uh, we did not know about it. Now back to your question about the undue burden. We have we have exhausted. We, we've talked to the Board of Selectmen, we've talked to the Treasurer Collector, we, we've gotten other folks involved at the state level. So there is no way to undo this. We can't, the, the, the town's municipal system does not allow for checks to be cut back. The town's municipal system doesn't allow for interest to get waived. Again, RRG will pay the interest on the difference of the overbill. They're literally, we've researched, if you have a solution that we do not I know would, about, I if would. we do have a solution that we don't know about and the town has the ability to do, we will do our best to implement it, but there isn't. Talk with Nate. Nate might not know. He might know. He, he told me this can be fixed very, very quickly. I really think you need to bring him in and have him look as a third party and then consider getting RRG out. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The RRG's contract comes up this year. That'll be at the purview of. Why can't we just get somebody in town that lives in town to do be the assessor instead of hiring out a subcontract that it works one day a week? It, you're paying the guy eighty, what eighty, hundred grand a year. That you can pay somebody full time that, and be here full time that can service the, the town. So when I have a question, I don't have to wait till Thursday. I call, I left the message with him. Almost two weeks ago, right after the, the next day after the meeting, I'm still waiting for a phone call back. Okay. Well, we've taken your. I mean, I just want to make sure everyone else yep. has a chance to talk. So we, we hear it. We've looked into other options before. It's unfortunately there are not a lot of people applying for, for assessors positions out there. Well, no, we'll nobody wants this team to look into this. Excuse me for a minute, I know I'm out of time, but can I just say one thing to solve the problem? Um, uh, if if Ms. Fade... Wait, 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 tax bill, not the full thing. You have three months to spray that away. And then everybody saw everybody saw. It. So is there a letter Another way to draft for the for the bank? Send send a note to the bank. Instead of you paying the new bill, just pay what what was paid last year, I'm sorry. And then everybody hey, everybody's happy. You got three months to do it. So we will look into that if it's an option yeah, for us to go. post a letter that you Thank can you. grab and give to the bank. Thank you. Hi. Mrs. Fabian. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Leah Fabian, uh, 30 South Kingman Street, Lakeville. Also a member of the select board, and I have been for almost six years now. Well, I'm a member of this board, if I'm Prior to that, I was on the Board of Assessors for four years. So I just um, want to just offer a couple of pieces of information just to have, for, so folks will have some stuff to just help process everything i mean first of all it's a mistake none of us are happy about it especially the folks that have to pay it second of all other people's taxes went up too mine went up almost 250 dollars a quarter not like what yours did but i don't live anywhere near the water so you know the the valuations are going up everywhere so that's just because real estate is kind of crazy i think you've heard this before the market trend takes about a year year and a half, two years, to affect your valuations. It's not like we just pick these numbers from nowhere. So the real estate market does drive the valuations. The other thing I will say is, it does. No, it's not. I'm sorry, but my land worth 837,000. For an 18,000 square piece of land, it's not local valuations. That's, 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 um, that's fine. Um, so I will say this. So Mr. Oliveri and I are sitting on the Board of Assessors many years ago, and we were on our sixth principal assessor in less than eight years. So at the time, I think, according to the town budget, we could have afforded to pay a principal assessor about sixty-two or sixty-four thousand yeah, dollars. The comp, you know, towns around us 
were paying 70, 80, 90, and, and the cities back then were paying a lot more than that. So we had to find a method that would work for us, and that's why we decided to go with an outside company to help us. Now, in, in nine years, I can understand why the Board of Assessors had so much faith in the work that RRG did, because in nine years, they've never had a mistake, certainly nothing like, like this. this so I do, you know, I can see why the assessors, you know, were, were trying to figure this all out and wanting to believe that, you know, what was going on. However, that being said, I know, because I spoke with them, and other people that they weren't happy either. And they also started trying to investigate what was going on, as did, and I'm not speaking for the Board of Select and the Select Board right now, I'm speaking as myself. Um, I started making phone calls to everyone I know saying, okay, we know this, we know that, we know all this stuff, we're all certified assessors, you have to pass an, ex an exam to be an assessor, unlike many other boards in town. Um, so in the end, even though we weren't writing everything down on the town's website, what we were all doing and everything else, we were putting enough pressure on everybody, especially DLS, the, you know, to, to actually start taking a look at things, to actually do that, to check their work. And they did. To the, the other answer to your other question is the state comes in and audits us. and we have to be within less than 1% of whatever their standard is. So there really is mechanisms in place. Unfortunately, this wasn't a small error. This was a big error. But even that, you know, between John and some of the select board members and the, the assessors, we've been asking every question. Pro folks probably don't know. The treasurer in town has the ability to waive no more than $14.99 on any tax bill, whether it's a late fee or interest. And that's done for a reason, so that you don't have people at town hall doing favors for whoever they may want to do favors for. So some of these things right now really are out of our hands and we just need to work together. And I will say, two days ago, our RG, hadn't even, you guys hadn't even come up with this plan, so I'm pleasantly surprised to see that our RG is going to stand behind what their, you know, their work and try to make it better by covering the interest. So I know you guys have been working on this, you know, so uh, last thing, they, we get stipends. Um, yours is what, 150 bucks a month? Uh, it's 1500 1500 a year. A year. I mean, it's not really a paycheck, it's a stipend, it covers you know, your gas back and forth to town hall to sign papers and, you know, it's it's not really a paycheck. I don't think you guys, any of you are doing it for the $150 a month. Do they get health insurance? Um, I don't ask those questions. That's their own. They have access to it, but I don't ask mm -hmm. folks that question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, anyways, you know, the Board of Selectmen hasn't, you know, we were asking the same questions. We were saying, listen, you know, we need to figure it out. And you know what? We did. It's a little late, but we, everyone had to pay their bill, but we, we worked together like a team. And it was a mistake. We figured it out. Uh, I don't know. And the topic going forward, where whether we, you know, rehire RRG or look for an independent person, that's going to have to be a discussion again with the select board and the assessors. And I'm already working on it. I'm already working with human resources to try to, you know, figure out what salary we could afford to pay someone. It's just not, there's not a whole lot of people jumping up and down to do assessing work because the subject matter is just extremely difficult to begin with you know job security go into assessing i'm not kidding right you are right? correct this, this. So, anyways. hello hi. bob hi bob marshall 16 barstow street 
Uh, do you know whether RRG has errors and omissions insurance? I do not know. Many businesses. Top, I do not know off the top of my head, but I, I'm, I'm going to guess they probably do. Have. I would like you folks to investigate that to determine if they do. If they do, then I say we ought to file uh, a suit against them for whatever the cost of this aggravation is to individuals and, and to the town. Well, whether they have the e E&O insurance or not it doesn't prevent anybody from filing a suit. E &O well, that's true, e but at least there would, be, there, there would be a, 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 a pocket of money from which to, to get that an insurance company, which right. obviously you but, know about. But just for, yes. just for the sake of the uh, argument, there has to be a, a uh, damages. damages. And ultimately, this is all going to flush out to the actual value of the homes. Well, so it's costing people a little more up front, but it should on the back end even out. Okay, for those people who can afford it, but for those who can't, uh, this could be a serious hardship, and I think it should be investigated for that purpose. Um, you mentioned uh, a little while ago, John, that yep. um, that RRG's contract is up soon. When is that? I believe it's the fall. The fall, and you obviously will be reviewing their performance. Whether this happened or not, we'd be reviewing their performance. Okay. It gets re it's a process for RFPs, as you I think you know that you know sure. it, it, you people have to submit them. They have to go through a vetting process. Um, it comes to us. We make a recommendation, but ultimately the board, is, the, the select board, um, is the hiring authority or, or awards the contract. Okay, thank you. And the last point that I have, um, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to phrase this properly, but let's say the amount of money that collectively for all of the 200 uh, people. Um, was a million dollars, the, the, the money that they were being asked to pay that wasn't theirs. Um, once that all gets settled in the refiguration um, in, in the fall, I'm guessing, only guessing, that that's going to be an impact either on the amount of money that the town is going to receive or the other um, citizens in town and paying their taxes. Is that accurate? The money, to, yeah, the money that they're going to receive doesn't change. Whatever the town is going to receive between July 1st of 2024 and June 30th of 2025, it's always going to be the same. That's the other thing I think we, we tried to express at the last meeting. I'll explain it again. The total amount of taxes collected by the town has already been decided and voted on. How that is apportioned throughout the town folks, including commercial and residential, is the job of the assessing authority. They come up with a valuation and then they use a tax rate. So arbitrarily, if everybody's property taxes we cut in half, I'm not property taxes, excuse me, property value we cut in half, in order to collect the same amount of taxes, you'd have to double the tax rate. So typically every year people's tax rates go down, which is the amount you pay per thousand dollars of value. The job of the assessors is to try to make that fair and even throughout the town. So there's a big misconception that the town is doing this nefariously, and some they've seen a lot of people talking about the connection between them. The no, money. not you, but the money that was missing it with the school department. That this is somehow this is how the town is collecting that. Those two things are so far removed. It's not not how the process works. So once the, the final values are set in the fall, that's when the final bills are going to go out. And what you said is 100% correct. If, if the initial bills had a bigger proportion coming from the people on the pond and these, those get corrected down, the only way to collect the same amount is to increase that throughout the rest of the town. The other thing I want to reemphasize again is if even after all of that's done, you still feel your values are incorrect and you can provide us with factual data and I, I'm not aware of whether you can or cannot use an appraisal, an appraised, um, a paid appraisal. David from RRG said no. We'll look into that. But whether you can or cannot, if you provide us with factual data, whatever information you, you give us, if we agree to that and we offer you an abatement, we lower the amount of taxes you owe, 
is something called an overlay account that is basically funds available so that the town still collects the same amount of money so we don't have to fire a teacher or a police officer. So there is money in a process in place. And again, even if we deny that abatement and you still feel it's incorrect, there's another step beyond that. You, get, you go to the state and then you can you know, make your claim to the state. Your, uh, Thank you. Appeal to the state. Noel Rillo, Reservoir of Lakeville. Um, the fact that Dave Golden and, or Goldman from ROG isn't here tonight doesn't give us any more confidence in him. It was their error, and it's unfortunately you are all here having to answer for it. Now, um, they can't, that being said, they, we don't want them to just disappear because this was their error. However, going forward, they can't just write out their contract. They, they made a huge error, and, and now we cannot trust them to correct it, unfortunately. We need to have someone that you have confidence in and that we have confidence in that they are, are correcting and overseeing what, what happened. That's point number one. Um, so it's not all on you. You know, in all sincerity, you subcontracted with them in good faith that they were going to do good work product, and they didn't. So, you know, it's not on you. But what is on you is that going forward, the transparency issue. And uh, there's a concept in healthcare called process improvement. And I think it would really help the department because going forward, it, I think that it would be a good idea to review how do we hire this contractor? What did we look at? Did we look at what they did in Lunenburg? Did we look, did we look to see their work? Show us your work product so that there's more confidence. You know, you can't see everything, but um, code references. Like the fact that someone left a file open, that doesn't mean anything to these people. These people, some of these people are on fixed incomes. They don't, they don't, that doesn't mean anything to them. Uh, what I did hear is that there was an incorrect neighborhood designation, whatever it was, classification applied. So if, if that can be highlighted as that was one of the errors, there should be an entire review of their work and it should be documented so that you can see next time you have someone do this work, you said, make sure they're not doing this. Make sure they're applying the right code references so that you're not in this unfortunate position. Um, I think that's pretty much all I wanted to say, and I would love it when I get my tax bill. I, it may seem like a small thing, but I'd like to have your email on there just so I can email you and, your, and the phone number direct line to the department because I had to call a lot of phone numbers today to get that. So I think that would help with transparency, but please don't let this just be business as usual. Don't let RRG ride out their contract. Get someone else that we can feel confident in. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jenna McNel Melvin McNulty, um, 26 Fuller Shores Road. Um, I was just, the last time that we had the meeting, I had asked if there would um, be transparency about definitions of things like what um, your definitions of neighborhoods and what each classification of neighborhoods means. Um, and um, Mr. Golden, I believe, said that he would provide that. That hasn't been provided, so I just wanted to let that be known that we're still waiting for that kind of information. Also, the same thing for um, the definition of what, like what types of water. When you were talking like waterfront, what does that mean for um, those on Long Pond versus other bodies of water in, in Lakeville and why are there different classifications of type of waterfront and what does that mean um, would be great. Um, I also wanted to point out that um, one of the statements that was just kind of made was that because of how the tax, the taxes, are, the nature of the taxes are set up and that you're going to um, you, you know, the first quarter of taxes, this next quarter of taxes, but you can only, if you feel that you can only pay what you owed last year, you can do that next time. It, but it'll all come out in the wash at the end, you know, if you file abatements and all of that, which 
makes sense, and I know that's the law and stuff, but it, in a way, it also kind of smacks of privilege. We're talking about some people who don't have a mortgage that had, I believe, an August 1st deadline to pay their first quarter taxes, um, only had 30 days to budget that in to their, to their household budget, right? Whether or not, and that's not just for people that have a fixed income, that's for everyone. We all have budgets that we live by. Some people have more room in their budgets than others. But there's a lot of people that don't have a lot of wiggle room. And some of those people don't have a mortgage, but they have, they're paying their tax bill on August 1st. They already paid that bill. And some of those people are not having the type of nutritious meals this month that they did last month because they had to make sure that they paid that bill so that they could file for an abatement because that's what they were told last month at the last meeting, right? You cannot file an abatement unless you paid your taxes on time. That's what Mr. Golden said. Well, that's true. Correct. Right. That is true. So, therefore, because the tax bill that, those, that everyone received and had to pay by August 1st if they did not have a mortgage to take that in, they've already paid that, right? They've already paid and, not, and did not have a budget for that. I hope you're just seeing how much that really impacted a large portion of the people that we're talking about today, right? It wasn't just oh, well, you can make up that money later. This is impacting people's ability to eat, maybe keep their houses cool right now. It's serious things. And I just really want that to be stated out loud because I don't think that people are realizing. And if it's only one person, which I'm sure it's more than one, that's one too many that are not eating this month the way that they have previously because they did not have any idea that this was coming down. They paid that bill already, and now they're being told that you might get some relief in a couple of months. Maybe not, maybe so. That's just one thing I wanted to point out. I really hope that people see the severity of what that means for certain people. And they're not going to tell you who they are, because we're talking about very prideful people. They're not going to tell you who they are. Um, I just wanted to point that out. You had did state that um, in the letter that 200 properties were affected by this mistake by the vendor company, yes. right? Um, how many how many properties are on the pond? I honestly don't know off the top. I believe I, I heard two different um, numbers. Three eighty. Three eighty. So why are only 200 properties affected um, by this mistake, but not the other 180 properties that are on the pond? The best answer I can give you is, as has been referenced a number of times tonight, is the fact that they were, he was going through a process of establishing what the assessed values were and whatever process he was at when they grabbed that information to kick out the tax bill, those 200 properties were the ones that were affected. He was in the middle of doing a process of a formula and he <coughs> looked up his file but left it open. and. Again, I'm not technically sure what the process is, right, but right. they come in and grab that information to kick out your preliminary tax bills. So there's approximately 180 people that were on the pond that did not have that dramatic increase in taxes? If, if in theory, there are 380 houses on the pond, mm -hmm. or properties on the pond, I should say, and we're saying 200 of them, we've been told, are affected. Where did the number 200 come from, I think, is what we're, we're getting at. The 200 comes from the report that kicks out that says this, this, amount, of, this amount of properties are over 50 percent increase of 30 the, the, that's the number of properties that had significant increases okay um, and would you uh, are you as a board going to be looking at that as well as the other 180 properties that are not targeted as having a significant increase we're looking to they, make they, sure that that they they, that they that all get looked at they all get looked at if someone is under assessed you know they I don't know who that would be, but if you're under assessed, it's, it's, go, it's going to get pushed up the other way too. If you're over assessed in this process, you're going to. No, come but back I, down. I'm just thinking, I'm afraid that my thought, what I'm afraid of is there's uh, targeted 200 properties that they know of, but there's 100, say, about 180 properties that are not under this umbrella of being wrongly, uh, highly assessed. But we don't know if that's true or not. So I just want to make sure that all the properties on the waterfront are looked at to make sure that they. We, I, I hear you're saying 
Just make sure that it's only 200. If it's more than 200, make we, sure I, we, I incorporate think that, everyone in that list. Yes. Right. We will. Um, then um, I just also want to say that Mr. Golden did state at the last meeting, and I know you did say that, that um, he was the one that would be recommending approval for abatements. It, I don't, and I would be very con, um, concerned if that continues to be true, because he did state that at the last meeting. Um, I would not want to be the one that work at this point. Um, and, um, he, and he also stated at that time that he personally would not entertain comps submitted that were prepared by real estate agents or other professionals. He did see, make that statement. So I would like to see that he not be the person that is approving abatements at this point. He, he would, he makes suggestions to us. We, we approve of this approval. Okay, I, I would think that he would not be the person that would be making suggestions to you at this point, but I, I don't know how else to have that. Your, your preference would be him not to be involved in the process. I would think, right. that would be. You're not going to hire a back guy yet. We don't hire him. The select board does. But in, well, in, in defense of the select board, the process goes through us initially, and then we turn around and suggest, you know, we, we make a recommendation one way or the other. So. Well, the select board is here. Maybe we should find out if you're going to hire that guy that uh, screwed us. I know. Well, <laughs> the, select, okay. the select board is up. I think it wants to speak after this woman. So That's if you want to get behind uh, them, you, know, you the can. The select board said... She said her taxes went up two hundred dollars. If it went so, up fifty sir, or hundred you know, percent, you know oh, I'm going oh, to listen to you. But if you got to get fifty or hundred percent. She'd be jumping up and down like us. <laughs> um, I and I and again, I, this is just a question because of what I do for work, and I don't know how this works for you guys. Ask away. But when you were reviewing the work done by by the vendor. If they were, um, you know, it, did you see that there was an exorbitant amount of tax increase for just a certain amount of people? Did you notice that? Like, I'm just wondering who, because you have to sign it. And we already told you this. Like, could you imagine how stupid we would have to be to not know if we did know about that to not do something about it? I, I'm just wondering. Imagine how, you how sign stupid your name we would have to be. No, yeah, I'm no, not no, calling no. you stupid. I'm asking. No, I'm saying I'm calling myself stupid if we had any inkling of that. That but, we wouldn't okay, do something I'm, so about and as, I, what and I, as I said earlier, I found out the same time you guys did when, so I, got my, no, when I got my tax bill. So there's no checks and balances, unfortunately, for you guys to not, see what's going to happen that, before. Not, not Can I just point. finish what I'm saying? You're asking Please. us a question. I am, you don't know what I'm asking because I haven't finished speaking. I have not. Answer it. And what I'm asking you is very clear and concise. All I'm asking is before the taxes go out before you sign and say i approve this we didn't sign you, anything you don't sign anything that you say not that you approve not that preliminary bill okay that's all that's that makes it easier so you don't sign and approve or anything they, before all they're doing out. is going in and grabbing whatever's information is in there at the time when we finish this in the fall yes then we do need to sign off on that that's when we get to look at the finished result they grabbed the result that wasn't finished because a file was left open and we found out, as John said, at the same time everyone else did when everyone got the tax bills and it went, it was, they were through the roof. All okay. right. And I, I know the other thing is that um, I know that Mr. Golden had met with specific people. Um, and I know you can't speak for Mr. Golden, um, you know, because he did say if you have specific individual questions to see him personally. So some people did. Um, at that time, when they were speaking, some people were speaking. Um, he gave out numbers saying, don't worry too much, your tax, you know, your assessment might go down by $200,000. Why does he have that certain, that number in his head? Why is he able to make that? I'm just saying. Yeah. It would, Unfortunately, I can't comment on okay. what he said. Okay. Uh, it just seems like, you know, it seems like he had a predetermined final amount in his head that he was hope, expecting at the end of this whole um, ordeal. So I thought that was interesting. And I get that mis mis mistakes happen. Lord knows I make a ton of mistakes I have in my life. I will continue to do so. Mistakes happen. Um, but the, it, it, and I'm just going to say the, the reaction, I, and I know that you're frustrated. I get it. I get frustrated at work too. But the, the attitude is really disappointing. You know, there's a total unwillingness to entertain the thought of 
of letting people continue and say what they need to say. Um, Mr. Golden would not under entertain the thought that there could have been a mistake. It was, this is, the way, this is the way it is, this is what happened, and that's the only way it's going to be. And then to turn around and find out that he, that he or someone did make a mistake like that is quite validating, but still at the same time, it was... It's not, it's not easy to stand up here and talk as it is and then to be talked down to and have people interrupt you um, while you're trying to speak is makes it extremely difficult for other people to get up and say what they need to say or wish they could say because they're afraid to do so. So I would like to, everyone to keep that in mind going forward as well. It's really hard for people to get up and speak in front of a large group of people, but when you interrupt someone, when you, when you are very hostile, um, condescending to them, it makes it even more difficult for people to come up and speak in front of you in front of a large group. Other than that, thank you so much for your time and your willingness to be here today. Just because I know you know this, but you're in the hot seat tonight, so I'm going to help you out here because maybe whatever. Um, I know I, as well as Mr. Oliveri, have spoken to the town treasurer, tax collector treasurer, and anytime anyone is having difficulty paying their tax bill, she is more always in, I mean, we're on our third or fourth treasurer now since uh, in my 10, 10 years of, you know, they are more than willing to help folks come up with payment plans or whatever. So I encourage anyone to tell your friends to just call the treasurer's office, but be very specific. Don't just say, oh, I want to talk about my tax bill. You know, um, just say about paying my tax bill. And the treasurer, she's phenomenal. Her name is Erica. She's wonderful. Again, I think in this case, in, in any other case, she can't waive the interest in a payment plan because of that $14.99 that's only allowed. But I think in this case, if our RG is willing to pick up some of the interest, no, I'm they're, sure... They're going to pick up the entire interest on the right, over, I, overpayment amount that the person yeah. doesn't make. So. so I'm sure if you go speak with her, you know, she'll, she'll try to come up with a payment plan. Maybe you don't need it, but maybe someone else needs it. Instead of having to borrow from family, maybe they can... You know, I mean, the town, people, there's so much the town does. The town does betterment loans when folks have to do their septic systems. I think this gentleman had told us that he had to do that last week. At, you know, so never be afraid to ask. And I do know that she said that she'd be willing to work with people for a payment plan. But will, will that affect going for an abatement? No. We were told differently last time. Well, right now we're still in the preliminary tax phase. Once the new bill comes out in January, but that's between you guys and the treasurer. She has control over that. Um, she has control over that. But she did say to get people there, if they, if they have to go on a payment plan, should be willing to work with folks. Let me clarify. You need to be up to date on your taxes by the February 1st payment because that's when the abatements the abatement. come to us. So even yeah. if you do not make a payment, relevant to this situation if you could be somebody on the other side of town who doesn't make a payment if you make it in january to make sure it's there by the first of february then you still have an opportunity to uh, to do the abatement exception so. this time for people that can't afford it to be able to file an abatement i, I feel this should be you know i mean I think there should be some, some we type are, of exception. Trust me, if there's a question out there that I haven't asked, I'd be surprised. I mean, I spent an hour on the phone with Representative Oral a couple of times on this. Like, what can we do? What can we, you know? And it's not a perfect system by any means, but I do know that the assessors are working on it. Um, You're saying if, if an elderly person is on a payment plan and misses that payment plan in December, they can't file for an abatement come January. I think that's wrong. I mean, I'm not going to ask for a payment plan. I can yep. afford it. Yep. I'm not yep. happy, but I can afford it. But somebody that's on a payment plan, heat and bill, yep. I, I think that's yep. wrong. I think I, there should you know be what? an exception. Right. And, you know, she watches every meeting. I'm sure she's going to watch this, but, you know, she's, she's great. Uh, as have all our treasurers been, you know, when it comes to trying to help folks make their... You know their payment on their bill. I just um, have one thing. It, 
nicely said last time that you were going to maybe have a representative at the senior center. I was just going to say that. Um, yeah. I don't know if you had done that, but maybe someone could go and let some of those people know yes. that some of the things that you just discussed I'll, here. I'll be I there tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I uh, represent the senior center for the select board, so um, I'll be there tomorrow. So uh, uh, Friday, I, sorry, Friday. I, I know in Ludenberg. Hang on, can I? Can we let Brenna come up if, yeah. you, if you're done? Yep, done. Hello, select board. Hi. <laughs> Uh, Brenna Donahue, 87 Crooked Lane, also on the select board, not speaking for the select board. Uh, last time we got together, I said that I was mad at the state, I wasn't mad at you. This time I'm a little bit mad at you, but I can't be, because it's not your fault. It's the system that screwed up. You should have been able to see. The, the Board of Assessors should have been privy to the preliminary bills before they went out, because you should have known that that was wrong. Oh, no. You should, have, you should have been able to look at it and say, that's not right, do that again. Because it's just, it was crazy. The amount it went up was crazy. Additionally, how much money was paid to this company? How much did I, I don't know what I'm talking about. It's probably 80 something, I think, annually. Um, so where I'm going with that is that the town people pay them. So it, it's kind of frustrating that they're sitting here saying, well, you know, we'll cover the interest. It's the least they can do for the problem they caused with the money from the taxpayers in town. And people who live on the waterfront are contributing more to those taxes. Um, is any of the money, oh wait, you answered this, excuse me. Um, does any of the money collected from property taxes go to the state? Any of the property taxes that the town collects town, yes. go to state? It, yes. Uh, I don't believe so. I'm not an expert on where our money goes, but the town collects it, and I'm pretty sure it all stays here. So uh, my question there is, if none of that money goes to the state, then why is the state able to mandate how we collect it, or why neighborhoods and how neighborhoods are reclassified? How are they able I, to... I don't know. I, I would have to ask someone at the state why they dictate that. Yeah. Us, so. <laughs> <laughs> Norman Arnold, State Representative, 120 Crooked Lane. Hi, David. <laughs> um, I think that's a really open-ended question that really isn't quite fair because it's kind of like saying, why do we have tra why can't we drive through red lights the way we want to? Because that's a state law that prevents you from it. So I think it's a pretty wide open thing. So if we would narrow it down. What specifically is the issue with the state regulations? Now, I spoke to David Golden because he had made a statement. Well, it's up to the state. You know, you got to call your legislators. So, of course, we started getting calls. But no one really knew what we were going to change. So I called Mr. Golden and said, what is it that you recommended we change? And, you know, he had not an exact answer, but... Near as he could tell, he made a statement at some point about how Proposition 2 and a half is enacted. And that there was confusion that people thought their individual properties couldn't go up two and a half. But it's the entire town, not individual properties. And I said, well, you know as well as I do, Mr. Gold, isn't it? Changing Prop 2 and a half to make it individual properties is really not realistic. Um, in fact, my suggestion would be that if anyone were to file legislation to change Prop 2 and a half, it would end up going away and we'd go back to the old days where towns can raise your taxes as much as they want and not hold to that 2 and a half. So I, I raise caution on some of the ideas that have been floated it. That's one of them. But in general, it's been stated, the state has many rules, a lot of them for the protection of the people. It was mentioned the $14 protection. Why is that? Why is the state telling us what to do? Well, the state's saying, we don't want a corrupt good old boy system in a particular town <coughs> to then be giving favors out to people. So if the, there's a narrower question on, narrow on, on what the state could do differently, I guess that would be in, 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 in so I'll leave it up to that. Yeah, absolutely. So the reclassification of neighborhoods based on waterfront property should be subjected to the population of the town. When we're talking about waterfront property, if you go somewhere like Plymouth or Hull or Westwood, these are millionaires. 
So they should be getting taxed more because they can afford it. When you go to a rural town like Lakeville, most of these people are elderly. They've been here for generations. They don't have the money to all of a sudden pay $12,000 a year in property taxes just because they have a view of water. And it's not, it's not like oceanfront. There's, it's just a lake. It's just a pond. It's a pond. Um, so it, it should be narrowed down based on the population and the general density or demographic of the town. It shouldn't just be a blanket taxation based on location. Right. So I think Mr. Golden possibly gave too much credit to the state <laughs> <laughs> as to what he was restricted by, yeah. which has been shown in this current meeting that is saying the actual problem was him and a mistake he may have made or whoever made this mistake of an open file. So I think we need to say, okay, um, his application or the company's application of state rules, that seems to be the problem right now, not necessarily the state rules. Now, I don't know that you can means test uh, pro all property taxes. It's just, you know, so you can't. You, you, the problem, the problem is you can't. You can't. You can't, you can't mean to test. You need to say what's so, the property value relevant as to who lives there right. and what their financial right. situation is. You need to go in with blinders and say how much is that property exactly. valued at. And, exactly. And it's based on market. So you know. So it, it sounds like you're saying, well, why couldn't the state provide this means testing of <laughs> property values? That may be, some people may want that, many people may not want that. That's, uh, I can tell you that would not be a simple solution and could potentially get into the state constitution. Okay, thank you. When I asked him about Freetown, he says, I don't know nothing about Freetown. I says, what's Freetown? Not in Massachusetts? I says, that lake is in Freetown. Why aren't they going up? Oh, I don't have anything to do with that. I says, so you're telling me that's not, a state mandated. But yet, Freetown is not in the state. Well, you have to remember, is it? <laughs> you gotta remember when he said that he was using the wrong formula. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what was the percentage change when they reverted back to the appropriate valuation? Like when they used this wrong formula and they brought it back down, what was the percentage of change between the, those? The formula hasn't been completed yet. It won't be completed okay. until, until we told them we want it done before the end of September to expedite the process. So and I think I saw that email. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, the error was their fault. The, the email uh, didn't give me um, faith in their company because there was really no accountability taken. There was language that was like, um, you know, we're doing what we can to ease this burden on the town's residents. It was, it's not a burden on the town's residents. It's a burden that they put on the town's residents. So there was no accountability in the email that I was forwarded from the town manager. Why are neighborhoods in re being reclassified? Is that part of the state mandates? Or is there a reason that they're being reclassified? It it's ties into the state mandates in the sense of just trying to come up with what the true values are of property. So if one neighborhood has uh, houses that are valued at more because of the proximity to whatever it is, whether it's a pond, whether it's um, a train station, whether it's, you know, if you're in another community, whether it's on the ocean, it's trying to refine and come up with a fair and accurate value for So their process the for reclassifying properties is going to be every, or not every what is it every five years that you're assessed differently or is it every year? Well every year they update it but every year you go through a total reclassification. So they're just kind of going to kind of do it and then see how it goes and then in five years change it if they need to? No, no, no. At the end of it, again, like I said, we don't, we weren't purview to the midterm stuff. So right. what happens is it comes to us and we talk about it and we say, all right, listen, you know, here's where these values are. And if, it, you know, as the regular people, we say, wait a minute, something here doesn't make sense. We need yeah. to go back and, you know, and, and we look at the codes and, and try to, you know, adjust them at that point. But okay. uh, no, it's not, no, they don't just throw it against the wall and say, oh, let's see how it works. And then if it doesn't work, we go change it later. The, the attempt is made to get it to right get it the right. first time. Okay. Um, this question, we may have already talked about it. Is the amount of money going to be what they're valued at next year? So I understand that we're still figuring out the formula, but is, is the, the, is the value next year going to be similar to what 
was done incorrectly, or is it going to be closer to what it should be? When you say next year, are you talking FY26? Are you talking after January 1st, a calendar year? So the quarters of next year, like the, I'm sorry. In January, the that's right, January, January sure. and, yeah. and uh, no, January. So that's this fiscal year. That's this fiscal year. So are those values, those values are going to adjust to what, I'm oversimplifying here, but what the formula kicks out at the end. And in the fall, when it says, all right, here's what, you know, yours, mine, anybody in here, here's what your value is, those will be the final values. Okay. And then it'll get adjusted at that point. So if you were overvalued now, you'll see your tax bill go down for the final two quarters. If okay. you're, you're undervalued and your property value goes up, your last two quarters will adjust upwards. Okay. Um, you're here. I'm not going to speak can, for you. Yeah. Can I team with you when you have a minute? Well, I was going to mention what you talked about okay. at the select board. Okay. Can I do that? Yeah, go for it. Okay. So Mr. Kovicki came to the select board at our last meeting, and he was discussing how he purchased his property two years ago? Yes. Two years ago at around $400,000. And this year it was valued at $800,000. And he, he pretty much discussed that it's not a property that anybody would pay $800,000 for. So I understand that there may have been an error in the valuation, but is that something that he has to worry about in the future where it could be valued at $800,000 even though nobody's going to pay for that? Nobody's going to pay that money if for it, If it's not worth $800,000, it should not be assessed at $800,000. If it comes out at $800,000, that's what the abatement process is to say, listen, it's not worth eight hundred. dollars Here's the proof that it's not worth eight hundred, dollars and then we review that, and if we agree, we make the adjustment to what we think it's worth. If we disagree, then the process kicks up if he still wants to dispute it to the state at that point, to the, okay. appellate, you know, to the uh, appeals. Um, I think that's everything I have. Uh, the one thing I will say, and I'll defend this to anybody who wants to fight me on it, is that I think every single one of those 200 houses, I think every abatement that they file should be paid. And I think it should come out of the town's, what is it, stabilization fund? Because baked into the our the town... Overlay. Uh, the overlay. The overlay, at the end of every year, we transfer, what is it, $300,000 into a stability fund? That is plenty of money to cover the abatements for these 200 people who have been affected. Because like, excuse me, who said it? Who was talking about food? She was. What's your name? Jana. Like Jan Jana? Jana? Jana. Jana. Like Jana was saying, it's a real serious issue. It's a real thing. It's affected people. And every single one of those abatements should be granted. Everyone. Because we have the money in funds. And that's the last thing I'm going to say. Thank you again. And I'm not angry at you. I'm just, this is such a bad situation. Yeah. Um, okay. Is he coming back, David? David still works for RRG. And so you're going to have him come back and do evaluation? Are we going to have him come back and do evaluation? Yes. Or you're going to get somebody from the other company from that company to come? Or are you going to have David here? We have heard the concerns that everyone would prefer not to have David and we need to talk to the company because I don't know what their availability is. My question is, are you going to have David come back? I don't think so at this point. The uproar would be wild. But he, he said that you were going to make the decision not on the board. Oh, oh, hang on, hang on. You're okay. asking whether we're going to uh, re give him a new contract. No, I'm going to, I'm saying, are you having David come back tomorrow He's on the and advise you? The company, David. the company is who we have the contract with, right. not David. And David. David's the one that's been advising you to do this and that. Are you having him coming back? What he's at today. I, I know what he's at. Is he coming on Thursday back to the office here? I'll tell you right now, before we make that decision, we need to make sure we have someone who can actually do the work, and I will make sure that if we have another alternative other than, than David, we can request someone else. I need to talk to the principal. I need to talk to the principal. request somebody else. That's the question. I you want to request somebody else. That's what he just said. That's what he just said. Okay. We also said that we're looking at this But you had passed it on to the select. That's for, for the renewal. That's for the renewal. The That's renewal. the contract okay. renewal. Right. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Rick Matthews, 37 Shore. So it seems like uh, you have uh, taken in a lot of good points that have been made by all the folks here. I see a lot of notes. You understand our concern with uh, RRG and David. So whether or not you're going to 
how you're going to take that into account in the future when you're re reviewing uh, the performance, I'm sure you'll make the right decisions. Also, uh, I don't think that, uh, you know, if there is, that there, there certainly doesn't, I don't want to presume that there's anything nefarious that's going on or anything like that, but it's come up and I think you've uh, accounted for that and, you know, faced that head on. Uh, we obviously had a concern with David and the process that he employed and we were just talking about the reclassification and the redistricting i believe um, that is still in force then that was something that david had come up with and rg but that's still something that is in place it's in process of, of figuring out whether it's going to stay the way it is or whatnot it's it's not it's not final it's not final I think it all comes down to, again, the job of the assessing authority is to try to make sure things are accurate and fair. So through the You've process, through the, I just said, but this, yeah. let me finish, please. Through the process last year, it was brought up and came to our attention that there was a lot of differences throughout the pond, the way things were valued. And a lot of it didn't, didn't make sense to us as regular people. So that's what we said, we need to, try to figure out a way to make this more accurate. And I think that's, again, back to what David was working on and incorrectly put a rough draft, basically, out there that was, was not correct. But the process of trying to make things accurate is the job. You know, to go back to what the selectman said, with all due respect, it would be asinine for us to approve every abatement just because somebody filed an abatement. That would be us not doing our job. That's absurd. Our job is to look at it and see if it's accurate and fair. If it's accurate and fair, we're gonna do what's right. Mm -hmm. We're not gonna just automatically grant something because somebody screwed up. We're trying to do the job properly. Last year, there seemed to be some inaccuracies, I think you said, uh, just a second Inconsistencies, ago. Inconsistencies, I would say more, yeah. Was, was that kind of the whole Parkhurst and Assawamset thing versus Long Pond. Was it? Did we hear that Assawamset and Parkhurst the taxes, the prelim taxes went down this mm -hmm. year? Did we hear that at the meeting? I don't know if it went down. Yeah, they did. Some of them may have gone down. Again, the, last, so, yeah, last, last year, yeah, no, last Park, year we had several abatements from Parkhurst. Parkhurst in a few from Assawamset. And as board members, and again, this came from whether you like him or not, a lot of this came from David presenting the information to us, making a recommendation. We looked at it and we, I don't think we, did we deny anything on the pond? I don't, I, don't, I can't speak for sure, but we approved quite a few. You, we approved the majority. What about, so if we had gone forward in this manner, you, you would have had a lot of abatements you would have spent a lot of time. As it is now, I think you're gonna spend a lot of time uh, trying to rectify what must have been a, 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 a real problem or, and what is a real problem. Now, did it work when you did that for Parkhurst? In other words, did you redistrict Parkhurst and Assawampsit last year or for this year? Yeah. as you're doing to Long Pond? So we went from eight or nine different classifications right. That's of water to three. But is that a goal? How is to that see. a goal? Because it's not working. It didn't work at well, all. Well, it's not complete. That's again, back to the problem. It's, okay. not, it's not accurate because it's not complete. Yeah. Can you run For sure. both ways and see which way it comes out better? We need to see which way it comes out right. You know how it would be so easy? Well, you know what would be so I'm, 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 I don't mean better, I mean more. Effort. You know what I wish we could do? It'd be awesome. You got Prop 2.5, we can raise taxes 2.5%. Let's just <laughs> add 2.5% to everybody's tax bill throughout the town. Nobody's going to run with Everybody. <laughs> Our job's easy. <laughs> but that's not what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to base it on what is the, what is the value. Some people's property values have gone up more than others over the last several years, and unfortunately, the waterfront has been hit the most because some of these sales are 
insane in my opinion, but they are what they are. But so it would be much easier for everybody if we just raise everybody's taxes two and a half percent. Why go? I'm sorry? He stopped the millions, 900,000. I looked at what he, what he put up on his, on, his, on his thing, and he talked an hour and a half, and you couldn't understand that word he said. I don't think the any, last meeting, I don't, the last I don't think any of us at the last meeting or this meeting agreed with the values. I'm not saying you, 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 you know, yeah, you, 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 you agreed that the values were off. <laughs> but I say, I, would, I said, he had less than, they had talked an hour and a half, he never explained nothing. And I kept asking them all the time. What about Freetown? And then that the state? No. I don't deal with Freetown. I deal with Lakeville. But well, you're telling me state mandate. The state tells you you have to do this. I says, how much is an acre of land worth on the walk? Does the state tell you? Tell me how much. A million dollars? Two million dollars? And I can tell you, my little quarter of an acre ain't worth eight hundred thousand dollars. If you read right from this report from MFS, which is the company that we're going to look into, assessment. In Massachusetts, assessed values are adjusted annually and required to be at 100% of market value. The Department of Revenue allows a range of 90 to 110% of the market value. Most communities statewide run a medium assessment ratio near 95%. I believe we are at 97? Yeah, probably just a little over 95. I think we're at 97. Don't hold me to it, but percentage of what it's really worth. So that's our that's our job, and that's the assessing boards, uh, the assessing authority, whether we subcontract it or have an in-house person do it. That's the job. And that's where the state comes in because they need, they do a lot of, uh, Mrs. Fabian explained how they have to you know, look at all the data and things have to be within a certain percentage. That's where the COD comes in, the coefficient of dispersion. Yeah. And again, I know this is all, you know, a lot of... The, the COD is almost another thing, this whole 95 to 110 or whatever it is, uh, has to be comp comparable to market value. Right. Exactly. Mark, that's what we're all talking about, mm -hmm. though. Market value, where did we that agree. come from? We agree. So, yeah, that whole thing, too, I, you know, I don't know who determined what market value was. I don't know how the state will do that and then use that information that they have now, which was inaccurate, to, let's say on the premium, if it had gone through, to determine that all the rest of their properties are within, you know, 95 to 100. So that's kind of a, you know, that's not a base, uh, I guess, a... Uh, an accurate base value to base uh, for it to be based on, um, but I guess the whole thing of taking districts and from seven down to three for all of Lakeville. No, no just no. for the waterfront. Problem. Just for the waterfront. So there were seven. There were separate. Right. There were seven or eight different waterfront property categories for all the ponds that didn't make sense. Okay. So what are they now? Now they're down to three. Three, but they still don't make sense. <laughs> What's the difference? <laughs> the way so, so the way it's valued, yeah. Long Pond is is the highest. Yeah. Because it's a fully recreational lake. Should be lower. Yeah. Yeah. I get you. I live on it. I get you. But um, and then Parkhurst was the second low, second highest. And then all the rest of the waterfront, ass swamps at Clear Pond, all those places are the, are the lowest. Parkhurst is, is less than. Uh, it's less than Long Pond. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Those are the ones with the sum of yeah. all the money. Yeah. Yeah. How is that, how is that but that's the thing. Once that sales data gets calculated, it's going to affect it's gonna, those values too. Yeah. The, 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 the Parkhurst sales data hadn't, hadn't happened. Yeah. Remember, this is two years old. So you're absolutely right. What's going to happen yeah. is that day data is going to get entered and then that will get adjusted in that neighborhood. Remember, a neighborhood code is a neighborhood code. It doesn't necessarily mean that Parkhurst's neighborhood code is always going to be number two. If Parkhurst keeps having these sales, they may, they could, in theory, jump up to number one. And again, this process isn't done. We have three neighborhood codes now. We could sit here at the end of the process or, or to, further into the process and say, you know what, we need to come up with a fourth code because we need to we need to bifurcate 
the the codes in log on log pond because some houses are worth more than others based on certain aspects and whatnot. Based. So again, unfortunately, the process isn't done yet. I'd love to be able to have a crystal ball and tell you guys right now, here's what your number's going to be, can, can but I can't. Can you give us a breakdown of each neighborhood description so we can figure out where we are and yeah. if we're done right? Just, just, just because you're right. saying, yeah, but well, what's the differentiation between one, two, and three? What makes one more worth more than three? Right. It's not I just that. Am I three, am I two, am I one? That's it. No, it's not just the, the neighborhood classification code. That's one of the factors that David had on his slide. Yeah. Age of your home, square footage, et cetera, et cetera. But he, but he told us he wasn't taking square footage. He yeah. said it was no, square footage of your home. Not, right. not it was just like the land. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It had nothing to do with the My house stayed in the same. The land went up from $200 to $800. That's all he did. He yeah. just went on land. That's it. We're trying to figure this out. Can I ask that question? Is were these prelims based on land only? Yeah. Yes. 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 I mean, yes. I have to ask the direct question they're, because it's been so much they're, back and they're forth. Not, they're, the, land is what affected the increase on the prelims. Yes. Land is what affected. Because okay. the, land so is what, is, the land has to do with the neighborhood and that's what was being yeah. kicked around and got grabbed early. We, we uh, and then uh, at the last meeting and what we all talk about is, you know, we understand but some houses don't have water we talked about that <coughs> seasonal versus and monster. why yeah. do we is that something that has to be proved all over again or it's something that had been written in, in the deeds I and accepted by the town he bought a house that was seasonal and that's on the deed everything was based on that all the paperwork and I'm not you know, I don't know legally, yeah. but well, well, why did he have again, to prove it? Again, town council, uh, legally, you wanted to legally, town council said it's irrelevant what's on a deed or what anybody tells you. If there's water, that's considered seasonal. No, that's I understand. That's if there's not water. If there's not water. If there's not water, it doesn't matter what the deed says. If there's not water, then it's seasonal. So everyone has to go out and reprove that. Well, is that part of an abatement process? Are you abatement? You have to. Is that part well, of the, abatement, well, what we were told about the abatement was, show me comps, yep. comps, comps, comps. And if I didn't come to these meetings and I'm 85, I probably, the money would be taken out and I wouldn't know anything. I'm the 201st house. You know, there's 200 houses affected. All these comps that are coming in for Long Pond, uh, they're gonna be applied, I assume, to every house in that district every house in that neighborhood if we get information and in abatements that pertain to other properties that would you apply want? for an abatement that gets put into the formula going forward yeah absolutely we'll okay why are we doing the job <laughs> all right did you do an abatement did you do that yeah. why don't all the comps in the end of the city I, I need to let him finish and then I'm sorry. Oh, if you want to finish, so that they're they waiting to come up. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll ask the question. It's, it's not complete. It's the same question. answer we've what given him all night long. Okay. What is it? Why it's not, not complete. complete. All right. It's not complete. So you have a lot of a lot of work, and if this, the majority of the work still needs to be done. Yeah, I would say so. Also, <laughs> if 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 that error had been a decimal point, this whole thing about an error, I can understand. All right, we'll call it an error, call it whatever it is, but I think if what it was a decimal it? place, it? and instead of 100%, it went up 1,000%, that would have flew right past you, right? And I would have got a bill. Oh, I would have caught it when I get my tax bill. <laughs> well, I don't isn't that a little late? Okay, <laughs> okay <laughs> it's a prelim, I understand that, but gee, I, I, I would have thought that, and again, I can't do your job of telling you that, but I, I agree with you. I, I think, think that, why, why is there not some process that, Right. In the computer that goes off if it's over Absolutely. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't that be nice? I can, and I, 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 I can make this comment right now that as long as I continue to do this, <laughs> that even though it's not in the, because there's a, there's a timeline that the state, you know, hands sure. gets us and says you need to do this at this point, this at this point. I've already made a note that we need to sign off on what the number is in the file before it gets picked up for the prelim bills. Again, it's a prelim bill, that's why there's probably nothing in there that says you need to sign off because that's gonna get adjusted so down the road. 
but unfortunately, yeah, this has never happened before. Someone has never left the file open, at least in Lakeville. I don't know if it's ever happened anyplace else, but I can assure you, if it had gotten left open before, it wouldn't have happened this time because I can guarantee the three of us will make sure someone's saying, hey, did we check the file to make sure it was the right one they grabbed? Because once they grab it, as you can tell, and we've exhausted any opportunity to make any changes now, once it's out there, you literally cannot pull it back. We literally can't make any changes. Who supplied the file? RRG. It's, it's a file that RRG worked on. It's a file that if, 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 the, if another assessor, if another assessing firm was working on it, it would have been them. If we had a, 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 an employee assessor, they would have been working on it. So it's not like somebody takes the file and gives it. Somebody, you know, some outside vendor, another one comes in and grabs it and uploads it to wherever processes the tax bills. When are the structures going to be assessed? <laughs> And One of the buildings is going to be talking seen. about just the land. Yeah, uh, it all happens exactly. at the same time. Okay. All happens at the same time. When when that, when those final numbers come out in the fall, everything will have been reassessed. <laughs> Value the land and the and the structures on the property. So we're looking so. at more money, more money instead of being a million dollars, it might be a million and a half. I, I can't predict what. Wait the, a minute! What you the, keep uh, saying you can't do that. You can't figure. You guys are the boss. Okay, you should know what's going on it, from day one, no matter what Dave says. Do you have more questions? Um, do you want well, to thank okay. you. Fair enough. You don't want to hear it, please. I said I'd fight on it, and you challenged me before I even left the room. So, it is not asked time to approve every abatement. I would hope that the people who don't need the abatement wouldn't file for it, because it might take away from the people who do need it. Can you supply the average number that an abatement consists of? Can I ask you a question point sure. pointedly? Yeah. If an abatement comes in front of us and we believe it's inaccurate, yeah. you're suggesting we should approve it because the vendor we hired screwed up and made a huge mistake. Define inaccurate. I don't need to. You know well, what inaccurate you means. <laughs> you do, and I'll tell you why. Because the Board of Assessors assessed this company and said, this is who we're going with. The previous select board said, we're going to hire them. Someone in that group should have looked into their past and said, they have a history of making mistakes. Let's double check their work. And nobody did. If, if you're asking the three of us are going to do something that's unethical, absolutely not. My it's unethical for you to suggest that we look at information that we disagree with and to make a decision. Why do, you dis why do you disagree with them? What, what, what? You're giving me a hypothetical. I haven't even seen the information. But if it is inaccurate, you're suggesting we should just blanket check mark because they filed an abatement. I'm that asking. is asinine. That's the definition of asinine. I'm asking. Hold on. If you looked at one of these houses that filed for an abatement, what would you look at to deem it to be inaccurate? What criteria deems it inaccurate? What? The same criteria that deems it accurate. But that's not an answer. Because the way that these people have to even file for an abatement is they have to pay right away. They have to be on time with everything, whether or not they can afford it. And then you're turning around and saying, well, you know, you don't really qualify for the abatement, even though it was a screw No, we're not saying that. We're, we're saying, saying we're going to look at each one individually. And we're also hoping that and there then, won't be that many, because hopefully many. the information is going to be correct yeah. when the final bill comes out. Brenna, are you concerned that these people are going to ultimately end up paying more in taxes than they should? No, I understand that it's yeah. going to balance out. So at the end of the day, they paid it a little early, or a lot early, right? And if it comes in that once this all gets resettled and you have a house that's a, that ultimately becomes assessed for $500,000, and that's an accurate number for the resale value of that house, but the person says, I only want to pay against four hundred and fifty dollars or 400000 so I think you should abate it to that. Should we abate it to that four hundred, dollars even if it really is worth five hundred? dollars What is the average amount of an abatement? What is the average abatement? I don't know off the top of my head, but the question, if, if you're asking, if it's only this much, why don't we just do it anyway? Is anyways? it 1000 or 20? <coughs> is it 20000 or $1,000? Is is we Honestly, I can tell you right now, I've seen some abatements that are in the $10,000, $12,000 range or on larger properties, commercial and whatnot, and we've had abatements as small as three or $400. Okay. So what I'm saying is that there should be a fair amount of consideration because that's accountability. A mistake was made that involved the Board of Assessors. If, if a mistake was made that forced us to over-assess a property, yes. 
That's what we're here for, to correct that mistake. If a mistake wasn't made and the person just said, I had to pay more because somebody screwed up up front, you reset it and now it's right about where it should be, we can't give the abatement at that point because just because somebody overcharged you ahead of time then they said, I'm giving you your money back to make it even, are you saying, well, you overcharged me ahead of time, why don't you give me a little more back? I'm just trying to understand your question. My, a mistake was made right. that increased property values over 100% in some cases. Right. And even though it was wrong, it was still paid. It still had to be paid to even get to the abatement process. So when you're just writing it, and I'm not talking about you specifically. I'm talking I understand. About when you're just writing it off, okay, a mistake was made, we're going to move forward. There's no, no, we're not writing it off. There's no accountability when you can just say, made a mistake, sorry about it, we'll do better next time. That's not accountability. Meaning People, you want to penalize the, 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 the mistake. I want to penalize the government for making a mistake that impacted people because the government is not supposed to okay, do that. Okay, well that's that. different. So what you're saying is, listen, the government screwed up, the government should have to give some money back as a penalty. It's not so much saying- To the affected parties, 100%. Yeah, I'm not saying assistance. you have to give it all. I'm not saying, I'm saying if someone requests $5,000 in a debate, you're not gonna give it to them. But there should be some consideration for everybody of these 200 homes that was affected, if they need it, Again. Well, okay. Well, first of all, we, the, we we can't do that. I mean, we have to we have to uh, we have to review the abatement based on information presented. To us. But your question, your, your the question you're posing is: Listen, these people were negatively impacted, and they are. I, I get it. Whether you know whether it washes out at the end, they had to go through this process for the first two payments. Yes. So, I don't think there is. But if you're saying, listen, maybe the town needs to do something for these folks because, and I think your point is, the town we're part of the town. The town made an error, even if it was the vendor who made an error, we hired the vendor. Correct. They made an error, what can we do to help these people Correct. because they got hit? Because so, the fact of the matter the, is... Okay, so that's another question. The question of whether we should just grant abatements, we can't, you, you, we shouldn't do that. We can't do that. It's that not, would but, be asinine. I'm speaking within the realm of reasonability. If there is no punishment, if there is no rectification of a mistake, then it's just going to happen again. But that's not about purview. It's not about purview. You're saying a kid does something wrong, unless you punish him, he's going to continue to do something wrong. That's beyond our purview is doing a bait. So. But, but it's not, I don't know this, and you should probably check it with town council, but that's probably in the selectors' <coughs> purview. Okay, bring it up. But it's nothing that we could do. Yeah. No, I'm not saying every abatement should be granted regardless of the amount. But I'm saying that these people should be special You're saying, is there a way we can give these people and give them some special consideration? Special to consideration. Yeah. Because this I, is I, a problem. Bruno, I'll ask the question. I'm pretty sure. sure the answer is no, and there may be something the town would have to do for them that would be at your level. Okay. So. Okay. Right. Leah. Um, I don't know if this helps or not, but Aside from this situation, um, abatements are usually for unique situations. So you have a house on your property, you're taxed a certain amount of money, all of a sudden, um, you know, tree falls down on your house and it wrecks your house, you can't live in it. So when your tax bill comes out, you go to the assessors and you say, okay, clearly I'm not living in my house, I can't, it's not worth anything until I get it fixed that would possibly be a case where they could abate a piece of property and say right or it burns down there's no house left on the property so you know sometimes when you think of abatements you have to think of them in unique situations um, I will also encourage everyone to um, you know familiarize yourself with things like exemptions statutory exemptions and um, there's, you know, like military folks have um, statutory exemptions, which helps you, you know, um, gives you a little bit of money off of your taxes. So all that stuff's available, I think, through the assessor's website. It's available pretty much anywhere on the Mass State website. Um, but if you have seniors, aside from this situation that you think could qualify for you know, some of them are income based. There's so much more help out there and I'm just taking the opportunity right now to, you know, let folks know just because we have a captive audience right now. So 
Um, veterans can get some money off of their taxes. Senior citizens can get some money off of their taxes. So, you know, just trying to uh, turn a negative into trying to get more positive information out there. That's all. Into a less negative. I'm not sure this is turning positive. No, it's not turning positive, but you know, it is. It can be, you know, a lesson. Um, uh, just I. Yeah, what David had asked me, and just to clarify for everybody, that's what I was just kind of leaning over to him to point out. The question in regards to if we wanted to have MFS come in and be a second set of eyes or use them in the future, what we'd have to do is we'd have to approach the select board, A, find out if they're willing to fund it, and B, find out if they're willing to sign a contract with them. So we can definitely ask them. Um, we've heard so that very in in, in that. If you guys reach out, we will. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, you know, a friend of mine said, you know, I have a mentality of a farmer. Who, you? Yeah. So I, I said, like okay, What's not a big deal. Right? That's what I said. What's wrong with that? So I want to ask the, uh, a, a couple questions. Is, uh, is the board, do they um, have insurance for the, from the town? I mean, if well, I have the right have, you to sue us? No, no, sir. No, sir. No. Yeah. We've got health we're insurance covered from by the town. Do I have a right to ask that? Yes or no? Yeah, it's public knowledge. They, we do have access to health insurance. I don't take it. Okay, do you, sir? I don't take it right now. I have taken it. Do you, sir? Yep. Okay, very good. Okay. Um, yeah, one other thing that, you know, bothered me. When you open up the meeting, right, if I was recording, you asked me if I was recording this. I asked the audience, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, you asked me too. <laughs> you particular? I wonder if I was recording and what would happen? We just, we just, you just need to disclose it. You can record it. Okay. Yeah. All right. I was just wondering. It's right? a proceeding. No, honestly, we do that at every meeting. Okay. Do it at every, every, every board does it at every meeting. The okay. three of us sit in the room. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That bothered me for some reason. I don't know why. Okay. Okay. The other thing is, I think you guys are great. But you're the boss, and you shouldn't have let this happen. Okay. Now I'm going to ask you another question because I didn't get clear. Are you going to bring Dave back uh, this week? Is he coming back to your office? Yes or no? I yes. don't know. I don't know right now. Okay. I can't tell you that. I listen. We've heard everybody does not want Dave so back. So he's screwed us, and you don't know if he's coming back. Okay. He gave Correct. us gave you bad advice. And you don't know if he's coming back. Well, I'm going to ask you a question. Can you make sure that he doesn't come back? A yes or no? We have an obligation to make sure someone's able to do the work. If we don't have somebody in the office to do the work, then what do we do? Okay. There's plenty of guys that work for that company. You can request that another guy comes in and takes Dave's place. Did you realize that? Are you sure they have someone available? It might be worse, right? But look what Dave did to us. Okay. I know we're going around in circles, and part of our job is to let people vent, and, and that is understandable. But to summarize what we've already reviewed multiple times here today, what we've taken in from everybody's feedback, we're going to contact MFS, the company that would help hopefully be another set of eyes. <laughs> We're going to make sure we definitely change the process that there's got to be some sort of red flag. I'm surprised the state doesn't have it, honestly. So that those preliminary bills don't have these ridiculous increases. Because that's insane that that can happen without us knowing or without the state knowing. So we're going to make sure we do something on that. The third major point is that it sucks that the people that are in a financial hardship had to make that payment. But going forward for the second payment, RF, I'm sorry, I can't even say the name right. What is it? RRG, RRG. sorry, is going to cover the difference between what you were going to pay and the and the incorrect amount. No, uh, just the interest. I'm sorry, the interest. I'm sorry, I didn't say that. I'm sorry, it said incorrect. The interest. Now they can't do anything about that. We're also going to work on seeing if there's a way we can draft a letter that would be acceptable to a bank. Because when he first told me about this, that's the first thing I said. People are going to say that sounds great, but I got a bank that I pay to, and they they escrow it. So that's something we're going to look into as well. Can you still be in compliance for an abatement? If yes, as we abatement? said multiple times, because for two reasons. Yeah. One, you've already made <coughs> some payments. Yeah. Secondly, you before the abatements payment. are due, you're going to have your final valuations. And that was going to be my last point. We're pushing the vendor to make sure these valuations come out 
in time that people don't have to make another erroneous payment. So second, third, and fourth quarter should be the dates that were we asked for was what September 30th. September 30th. The final valuations will be done, so you'll know what it is. So you may still disagree with it, but if, if this had never happened, you would have had to make that payment to file an abatement anyway. So, so those are the things that we are going to work on that we have control over. Okay. Again, I let you guys complain and do all that, and I, I have a hard time taking, as you can probably tell. But just some of it is just over and over and over the same thing. It's it's not getting us anywhere. And again, I know you got to let people vent if they're frustrated. But I'm more of a if there was what a can we do about it? Let's move forward. Undo Let's, it right now and go back and say, just kick out new bills. We would have done it. We we've, we've asked. We've looked at any possible opportunities. We just we can't do it. We uh, we trust me. I think I'm speaking for everybody up here. We completely get everyone's frustration. We, we feel bad, but we just can't undo what's been done. Can you guys try to set up a class for everybody to do these abatements? That's what they did in Lunenburg. They got everybody together and everybody did We're it our hope, time. We will do something on that, but our hope again is that once this gets corrected... We may not have to do it. Yes. No. If, if, if it comes to that point, can we do that? Yeah. Especially with the older people. Yeah, absolutely. Right. You have another question? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah. Are you going to let Dave in your office tomorrow? <laughs> yeah, are you going to let Dave in your office tomorrow? We've gone through that question. You already know we need, we need to have someone to do stuff. Uh, I have a petition to recall you guys. We don't have a recall provision in Lakeville. What's that? We don't have a recall provision in Lakeville. Okay, but we might have it in the fall. Okay. The, the, they, try, they, did that, they, they approved the... They approved it at a town meeting, but it got stalled up at the state house. Because okay, so we're, my oh, understanding okay. is, talking to the town clerk today, there was errors in the way it was, it was oh, done, yes. and it was unconstitutional or something. So, yeah. so I can, you want to clarify, I can clarify if my that. information is correct so, or not? Is so it the, stalled at the state house? So the recall petition that was sent to us that we filed, Senator Roberts and I filed, right, is still under review. It's not dead. Um, in fact, it's actually recently entered the final stages. Okay. So it's very possible that within, you know, I don't like, I like to under promise and over deliver. So let's say this fall, it very well could be passed, signed by the governor, which would then allow for a recall election to happen per the rules that were in that, that bill. Um, yes, there have been issues. That's why it's kind of taking time. I, but I checked on that because I knew the question would come up. I wanted yep. to make sure I had yep. information. I talked so, to the clerk, and that's what I was told. So. Yep. So just just so you know, it's it's still out there, and could possibly we could wrap it up and uh, give Lake the ability through that bill. Now, if it is found certain parts of it are unconstitutional, we'll have to delay. You know, we'll work on that until we get it. The parts that are wrong out. Does it come back if it's inaccurate to the to the town? So this particular one, I'm not to get into a full legislative process, so <laughs> but this particular petition, the way it was done, if we need to make changes, which we've already done uh, once earlier in the process, if we need to make changes at the legislature, we have to go back and get the Board of Selectmen to vote on those changes, which we did make early on with a bunch of changes we had to make uh, as it was filed, you know. Right. So if there are more, if there is in fact a portion of it that's deemed unconstitutional, which this is where we're at right now is with the committee that's looking into that particular issue. If it's deemed that way, then we'll come back to the board. Board can vote to change it or not. If they do, we'll go back and move forward again. So it's still in play. It's in play, Just but not yet. Not yet, so. So if it in the fall, if it does fall into play, mm -hmm. that uh, my family and a few of the other families would like to recall you, and no hardships because this is business. No, it's fine. This is business. Okay, thank you very much. Well, I actually, appreciate my, it. My, you know, it my, breaks my heart. It breaks my heart. Sir, you I'm have talking. Right I'm talking. You have every right to I'm talking. Am I talking? Whatever you'd like. Am I talking? You are talking. It breaks my heart to bring this up because I'm not a fighter. Okay. I love you guys, okay, but th this has to be changed right away, and we have a lot of talk, and you're the boss. You're the boss. So my, my seat is the next one up for election, so okay. if anybody wants to run, 
<laughs> we want to do it sooner than that. Okay. Nobody ran. All right. Nobody the ran. Last time. And and, and, uh, yeah. uh, my hopes, maybe I'm yeah, asking yeah. the board to Great. resign now. Okay. I don't think that's going to help you. Listen. I think, I would, honestly, that would be the easy thing for the three of us to do. It's not going to help you guys. Okay. If there's a process for it, we're not saying don't do the process. Okay. You're not gonna. You're not gonna hear me saying, "No, please don't sign that. Sign it. Go for it." All I can say is, it's not gonna help you. Okay. And have right. a no assessment. You know, uh, there was a guy in here. He's uh, where? Where are you? He said this uh, problem could be taken care of. Rickety split. Who was that in here that said that? Where? where? Who? Can you tell me how that can be rickety split taken care of? Because he already fixed it in the number. He knows exactly what, what the issues are, and it's very easily fixed. So that's like. Okay. We we don't know all the details. So I, I don't think it's exactly apples to apples, but we're we're gonna we're so, definitely gonna look into that. So I appreciate that. Thing. If you go through this, the process that they used in Lunenburg is I mean they went to every house. Yeah, that's what they did. Yeah. Every house so that's not room. that's not something that's gonna happen like that. No, but he got it done. Okay. Yeah. That's 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 excuse me for okay. my name's Leslie Nash, I'm fifty three more Street. That was actually my question. When you look at a piece of property and you have a house 750 square feet. Then you have a piece of property. It's 10,000 square feet. <coughs> Excuse me. You look at another house. It's I don't know. Let's say it's 1,500 square feet, and they have 10,000 square feet. Are we looking at the package that we're selling, or are we looking at the land? There's two because I think that that's a big problem around. Wait, I want to keep going. Just give me, give me a second. I have to get myself wound up to be able to do this. So I think that's part of the problem. Is when you look at like. You took six or seven and you took it down to three. And my first reaction at the last meeting was, I think the brush they're using is too broad. There's a lot of little weird properties around the pond. There's really strange properties. Some of them belong in two towns. Some of them are crowded in next to each other where if one burns down, it burns the house down next to it. There's other ones that are the same piece of, same you know, space for property. And the house is the same space. But, but it, it's got two floors and granite countertops and 20 parking spaces and a two-car garage. I mean, the three, the three neighborhoods, maybe that's too few. Maybe there was a reason there were six or seven. Maybe there was a reason it was in the Wild West. Maybe it was because people had looked at this at some point in the past and said, all of these houses are different. They'll have different access. This one's swampy. This one can't move dirt. This one can't build a house to replace the house that's there. You can't make it bigger. It's got to be in the same exact footprint forever and ever. Amen. I mean, and that's my point. We so is somebody going to look at that? Yes, yes. We understand exactly okay, what you're saying. I but I just want to be clear that um, the reclassification of the neighborhoods, they call it a neighborhood, the right, codes yeah, that I they know, use, the language, the whole language. that's what caused the big massive jumps right. across the board but that is only one factor in the ultimate value of that piece of property so it's not the only thing that's going to uh, determine the value so no, those yeah. those differences that you're explaining are all items that are considered and will be considered the reason why it seems like it isn't and there was a blanket screw the pond is because that was the one thing that changed was that neighborhood code and nothing else was adjusted, adjusted yeah. yet. So that error was a blanket changing of the neighborhood classification that caused the land values to go up in some cases. In so the prelim taxes went out earlier than they should have because the work had No, the prelim taxes finished. didn't go out the- It went out before the work was finished. Correct. Yes. The, the, the information was supposed supply. to go out. Correct. The information that caused those values shouldn't have been in there. It was premature. It should never have been there. Right. And, it was and premature I and inaccurate because it was incomplete. I was just, my only point is that it was, it's a paragraph in that report actually that Mr. Nash provided. Talks about how, yes, indeed, he went to each house. Mm -hmm. Well, only because, you know, nobody's looked at that house. If that house hasn't had a garage added to it, nobody's been out to look at the, see if he should change the taxes. If the house didn't, for instance, burn down and somebody had to rebuild it or fall well, listen, down. Listen, I know. think <laughs> all of us up here are not opposed to having them come in. 
Yeah, well, no, 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 no,
And then how would we go about getting a commercial rate versus a residential? Like I know right now we have one rate for everything, but like how There's do you- There's a tax classification hearing that happens at the end of this process and we present the information. We do give a recommendation whether it should be split or um, or single rate, which is what you're talking about. What's single now, you're looking at a split rate. Yeah. Um, and then um, the board of selectmen on whether it's single or, co or commercial. I will tell you that um, in order for residents to get any benefit, and I'm not going to use exact figures because I don't remember off the top of my head, but it's almost impossible for the residents to get, because we have such a small commercial base, because the town has voted down all these things from a commercial standpoint over mm -hmm. the years, that you'd almost have to quadruple, you know, quintuple the commercial rates to have the residents get like a couple of percent discount on theirs. So right. It's, it did, but the process is it is looked at the end of this, and you turn around and the select board ultimately decides whether they want to after we present. Does it require a town vote though to, to do it? Uh, I'm not 100% sure, yeah. but it goes to the select board, and then I don't know if it goes for if they can just do it there or if it, it continues on to the uh, town board. the town vote or not. But we don't decide that. Okay, so it's the select board I have to go to to ask that we do this. Yep. But the point I think John's making is, if we did do it, it's so minuscule. No, totally. I know it's minuscule. I guess my issue is the commercial property. When you look at their assessments, they're being assessed at a like square footage that's substantially less than the resident square footage. If you just look at land, because that's what we've been staring at for the last six months. So. My concern is because they're getting charged at the residential rate and not a commercial rate, there's no reprieve in saying like, hey, the commercial property is like the Eagles Club or Captain Bob's on the pond. They're, they're actually making out like bandits as compared to the rest of us. Uh, knowing the formula is not correct. And so I, we're again talking all hypotheticals. But I'm confused why there wouldn't be a commercial rate, even if it was only a few dollars more. Like Middle Bar is pretty similar, like the rates where free towns almost double. I, I'm confused why there wouldn't be an actual difference for commercial versus residential. Even if it didn't truly help the residents, at least there would be a sub, like there's an actual line in the sand difference. Because there's some, there is some commercial properties and there is becoming more of them with all of these apartment buildings and these pizzerias and all these things growing and becoming beautiful pieces of property. They're being assessed like everyone else who actually is trying to make ends meet in their residential home. So. But I'll go to the second. That's, that's, yeah, Thank unfortunately, we, we present the information, but it's not our, our call. And then, um, so we understand that frontage of the, like your amount of frontage on Long Pond is not taken into consideration of the evaluation. It, can, are we left to assume that maybe that's part of an error, or is that truly what's going to happen with the board doing that? I'm still not clear on that, and I'd like to look at that, because in my mind, that does affect the value. Remember what we said, we look at this afterwards. When we look at it, if we turn around and say, listen, we probably need to adjust that, mm -hmm. that's where we come into play. When the form, when it's done and it's presented to us and we look at it and we say, wait a minute, all right, these guys have, a, you know, 10 feet of frontage, this person has 300 feet of frontage, but we're looking at it the same way, yeah, maybe we do need a fourth neighborhood versus just three. Again, the, the unfortunate thing is we, we, we Really, we're not even close to that yet. Mm -hmm. Again, this, this is a process that usually ends up in November, but we're telling them you don't have an option. You need to have it done by September 30th so we can get everyone's values in play. Not that it's going to impact your, fund, your your second quarter tax bill, but at least if you look and say, oh my God, okay, it's coming down 30% or whatever the case may be. I'm just picking an arbitrary yeah. figure. All right, I don't like I got to pay it, but at least I know, all right, I'm, I'm starting to come back to reality here type of a deal. But until we get to that point where the information is presented with us, we can't act on it. So you will consider frontage once you see the final? We consider everything because honestly, I want the number to be accurate. Thank you. In an abatement? No, even before. Even yeah. before. My, our, honestly, we don't our have goal any abatements. is to have zero abatements. Yeah. We, you know what? You know what the best years are when we have two or three abatements, because that means we have probably got it right. It, when we have a lot of abatements. Well, Parker, yeah, it's a reminder. Huh? I said you guys are doing good. You know, my taxes were. Oh, well, because you did it, but trust me, there were other people in other parts of town who did. You know, trust me. There's very few years we only have five or six. Uh, and then, can we just find out if we, if we can submit? of paid appraisal yeah we'll find out 
and then yeah, that's on our list. So, hang on, you can submit whatever you want. You you can't, you know if, if if the impression was you're not supposed to submit an appraisal, we're going to throw it out. That is completely inaccurate. I can tell you that right now. You can submit an appraisal, whether we use it or not. I can't tell you that. You know, but then think about this. On appraisals, for for just those of you who looked at an appraisal, they do have comps on appraisals, correct? So if there's a comp on an appraisal, maybe we look at the comp section. You know, there's other things that. Okay, so we can submit an appraisal. You can submit whatever you'd like. You are not restricted on submitting anything. Can we find out from the state if it's acceptable in an abatement process? It's up to us. Oh. Okay. I want to clarify that though, because David yeah. made it sound like that would that was a that state, was a state thing. Right. Okay. And so I understand we'll part I partially understand the reason why. If you have a friend that's an appraiser, well, they're licensed though. Well, like our, like they're our attorney is also a friend. But you guys well, you have to find it. Submit your submit your appraisal. Unless the state says we can't use it, I don't see why we wouldn't. Right. Perfect. Right. Thank you. It's a legal form that's certified there. Yes, sir. Kevin Name. Boyant, 12 Paul Avenue, Fleetville. Um, I feel for you because I heard you guys were just as shocked as we were when these things came out. Um, it's almost like you got to build a double checking book to it before you do this. And even myself making a call and saying, hey, what was the average waterfront? Which I would think Norm can tell you because you've got these classifications. It's like very last easy. year it's, was under it's, 700. It's very thousand. easy going forward. Don't it's, very easy, it's very easy. Because going forward, we basically say any neighborhood's gone up more than 10%. Yeah. Okay. Let us know and let us look because that shouldn't happen. Because quickly I found simple. out the average waterfront was only $700,000, where this kind of caught me by surprise, too. That's for physical year 23, and then it was only like $30,000 less than that the year before. Um, so a double check, um, state level, uh, and I don't know if you really need it or not, but the abatement process is an executive session, so we don't. I can tell you why the abatement involved. process is an executive session because sometimes abatements have to do with personal issues with people. There are okay. there, there are multiple types of abates and exceptions, so okay. there's private information that people are giving you that you're not. The but I mean, in the, like everybody's talked about and you know you come out with the comps we all can agree that it's going to be pretty close do you need that executive session that's the massachusetts law i don't i don't know for sure but i have only been on the board for three years but i don't think has anything gone to the appellate tax board nope. no no anything said, that we've anything that we've denied which again I don't think there was it was definitely more approvals than denials but anything that we did deny my no, you seem like you're going to be reasonable my understanding this. is that nobody took their right to go to the appellate tax board okay yeah. and then i'm not we, saying that, that we have we have we, we i'm sure we, we have, have in the denied, past but, yeah but no we have denied things but i'm saying yeah the, i think honestly i think the last one that went to appellate tax court actually went to appellate tax court was the lakeville hospital property okay. probably 15 years and ago it, and it talks about in the letter remedy situation certified so we all can have our properties reassessed i guess that's the concern a lot of people see is you don't we're going to you're going to reassess them they're going to finish the process so it's not really a reassessment it's finishing the assessment process which hasn't been finished yet it got okay. grabbed at the 10 because yard line January. we haven't got we got 90 yards to go okay all right and i again just that you got to build a double check into the system up as a policy just so we all right. agree with you what's that we all agree with you because i feel for you too because you wouldn't be in this as well i appreciate it but we voluntarily signed up for this so yeah, no, but I mean, the, the, the he maybe, maybe listen, the maybe not so check, sure we should the have, but check should almost be a policy yeah. so that this doesn't get wrong. Yeah. All right. So, um, I was, so our second quarter payment is we paid last year's bill without being penalized. Yeah. Yeah. You pay last quarter. You, what you do is you take the second quarter for argument's sake, just for argument's sake. Year. If you have a five thousand dollar bill, let's do the second quarter. But last year, your third and fourth quarter were three thousand. Uh -huh. What you do is you're going to go to the assessor's office. They're going to say, "Yep, yours was three thousand. It's two thousand more than last year. You only pay two thousand. What's going to happen is the treasurer collected. There's no alternative for her to say, but okay, don't pay the two, but it's going to start accruing interest." 
RRG is going to reimburse Correct. the so collector's office so you don't get penalized. Yeah. Right. They'll pay the penalty is what's going to happen. You're going to get penalized, but they're paying the penalty for right. it. Right. That's okay. It's not coming out of your pocket. Yes, sir. And yes, we will make them put that in writing. Can we get a list of the, the 200 properties that were um, you know, mis misevaluated? So we'll know, like, I don't know, is it my house? Is it not my house? Good question. You know? Well, here's the thing. We, we, we have the... Everybody who's been affected is going to receive notification. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, when, when so right there. It's what, I'm, I'm not going to guarantee it's going to be within the next week, within a couple weeks. Oh, so you're going to receive a letter. Yeah, you're going to receive right. a letter pointing out you've been affected and, you know, here's what we're doing and here's your options type of thing. And I would suggest if you... If you don't if you, get a letter, right, and you feel you are affected, call the office or go down to the office. Bring that up to our I, I, you know, I, I went up 60, 70, 80 percent. I didn't get a letter. I should be yeah. included in that. Okay. You'll know when the letters go. What's that? You'll know when the letters go. Exactly. Huh? Yeah. Let's ask well, when. You know that we didn't right. When would we, we expect that letter to go out? We'll find that out, I guess. We'll actually. What we'll do is I'll make sure we post online that this, you know, the letters will be going out, you know, on this date in. You know, then I would just say, you know, it's the U.S. Mail Service, so it goes out on two months. Well, maybe not two months, but so if it goes out on a certain day. You're probably going to have to be, please give it five. As far I'm as MF, I'm sorry, Go as far ahead. as MFS and also the property classifications, is there some type of email that we could receive that says if we are the affected people that hey, we've contacted with the, you know, contracted with some a third party. How do we stay in the know so that we don't have to? We're going to have another meeting, I'm guessing, in a month, right? Yeah, the, honestly, the best so way, we'll, we'll we disseminate the, information as we can, but, can but we, the best thing to do is. It would be on the town website or. Yeah, you'll see like what that. our meetings, and we're going to keep talking about this stuff, so. Um, can we post something on our website? About, about what? Just that, hey, you know, that, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Right. Like, can you put something on there that lets us know, hey, we've contracted with, you know, uh, MFS or whatever it is, yeah, to. So okay, yeah, you know, just something to keep yeah. us updated if it's in between meetings along the way because obviously right around early in August, September, October. Um, so, and then I have one other question, and this one is: What if we were assessed under fifty percent? Would you guys wait till January for the money? I mean, that's kind of what you guys are asking, and I understand. But if the town was under assessed us by fifty percent because something was left open. Would they wait until January for the money? I, I don't think so. Well, here's so. the thing. It would have, the town, again, the town's still going to collect the same amount of money. It would have just, if you were under assessed by 50%, I get it. But, but your neighbor, what I'm saying is you're asking us to, you know, put our money no, ahead. I and and I, know, I mean, I get it. There's the, nothing you can if do. If the file got grabbed yeah. in your third and fourth quarter last year were 5000 but the file got grabbed and it only needed 4000 now because you were under assessed. Or 2500 Or 2500 <laughs> They would only collect the 2500 yeah. Okay. But what that means right. though is somebody then else would be picking up the difference. And then when it's settled up, you'd have a higher tax bill over the back end. So. Mm -hmm. I've seen one of the last ones because this list is, I don't not many items left on this list. But um, on reclassification, it seems like this whole issue came up from when you reclassified that neighborhood, right? Is that, that is that, pr that prompted that the, prompted the process. That, pro that prompted everything. Do, does it make sense if we hold off on finalizing the reclassification of those neighborhoods until next year, until we can really define what this is? Because it seems like, you know, Dave was saying, like the gentleman said before me, about frontage. I mean, there's just so many unknowns here. Can we, can we go back to last year's reclassification and just we take have this to, we year? Have, we have to update the process every year. We're off but we're not really in a position right now. Obviously, there was a big mistake that happened, and now we have to update this process in the next two months. The process can, was can already being that? updated. That's, yeah, well, we keep reiterating, and we've said it a million times, but the process was, was going on. Part of that was hitting send before you finished the process. But it's not like today is the day we got to start doing all this work. So who, who, who's involved in that process? Is, is that, because I went through um, the, the previous meeting notes, I didn't see anything about discussions on reclassification neighborhoods, unless I missed it. But I didn't see that. So how does that, how does, how does reclassification, reclassifying a neighborhood process work? When, when, where does that happen? Probably in March or April. Several months ago. So it should be in, the, we, me, in the meeting notes? 
in, in the meeting minutes. And it's probably on Lake Cam too. It's not. Most yeah, of right. it's not. Look at Lake it's so not. when did that? When does this happen? Like, I, like, how does this happen? <laughs> when you say how does it happen? It's no, like when were the discussions like? How, the, you would think of being the no, in the meeting minutes, right? That all right, we're going to yeah, reclass this. Honestly, we're, every we're going to take down. We, we have seven <laughs> neighborhoods, and we're going to bring them down to three because it makes sense. But I can't find anything that that was discussed. I can't confirm whether it's in all the in the actual meeting minutes, but it would be on Lake Camp because it was discussed at a meeting. It was discussed at a meeting. Yeah. So I think I should be able to go on line and look at the Lake Camp, Lake Camp, the the Lake Camp of, and those discussions should be in there on, be, be on how you of, of changing the categories of the um, okay the all right well, well, we'll, you we'll look at that three and a half hours I, can, you tell us, can you tell us how that took place <laughs> I, I, I go so I want to I went on the Lake Camp but they're, they're really short right they're like 15 minutes yes yeah. also and yeah. no we didn't have for some reason one of the last Meetings or two wasn't on Lake Cam, right? Yeah, but those th that was more recent. Those should have been on Lake Cam. So the reclassification should be in the meeting notes it should, in, in on Lake Cam? It should definitely be on Lake Cam. Okay. I can't all speak right. to how detailed the yes. meeting minutes are all the time. What about the meeting minutes? No. So they're not that deep. They may not be that detailed. They but won't have, They won't but, have the detail of the discussion. But there should be a discussion on reclassification of the neighborhood in the meeting notes, somewhere, right? Yes. That, I, I'm guessing that's. That, that's where they, that, that's where they would come from. Um, the company RRG, RRG. they're paying the interest. Honestly, that didn't impress me too much, to be quite honest with you. It would have been nice if, if that owner came back and said, "We'll pay the overage until everyone's corrected." But obviously, he he didn't do that. Um, I think the only way around this really is to bring in the third party. It's the only way that the 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 you know the that we're going to be happy, and probably y'all yeah. going to be happy too. No, honestly, part of the reason it's just the three of us is we're who you elected. You know, whether yeah. you like it or not, or whether we like it or not. So we need to face the music. Yeah. So we tell what's going on. We tell you the mistake. Yes, it's under our purview. We're supposed, we have oversight. Um, but yes, the, it, uh, we will bring in the third party, RRG, to field questions and, and, and whatnot as well. But I think it's. MFS. Huh? And the third party. Well, RRG needs to come to a meeting too. As far as MFS goes, I, you know, we again we can recommend to the select board we'd like to talk to them and engage them. Yeah. Uh, but it's really it's it's. And trust me, I'm not passing the buck, but we don't have the authority to contract. I understand that, but you're in agreement that probably that that that, that would be a good idea to bring in. No, when no, I say no, third party, I mean I mean an outside consultant. Other we than, hear you. We've we've you know, said it. Again. So do we go to the select board for that, or do you go to the select board? Because we don't want to miss this opportunity. We only have two months here, right, to to look at someone like that. I, some, I don't know how they're going to do the scope of work in this thing in two months. And that goes back to my question: Is can we postpone the reclassification, right? Because I don't. You know, I, don't know, I think. Hang on. Maybe I missed. It. Your point is, can we kind of stop the process and say, listen, just put it on hold, don't do anything, leave it the way it was last year? No, we can't. Because part of the process that the state's going to say is you guys need to submit your recap and your all that information. We don't have an option. And Norm's nodding back there. I don't mean to put him on the spot, but we, low, we don't have an option to say, stop, go back, just don't touch anything for a year. But if we're not ready to reclassify or we don't have a third we party because it's a mistake, doesn't, you, you doesn't, still have to state, move forward. The state doesn't care. And I don't mean it in a bad sense, but yeah. you're saying we got a deadline. You you better meet that deadline. I know nobody wants to hear it. We've said it again and again and again. Like hopefully when we get to this final valuation, most people are gonna be maybe not happy, but at least okay, this makes sense. I think this is accurate or acceptable within a reasonable range. Right now it's not, clearly. I, I think the only one of the things, I understand the, the reclassification neighborhood. I mean, I think we all understand it's waterfront property. What makes me nervous is, the, is, is you know, um, someone said it earlier about smaller lots, land frontage, you know, uh, frontage and, and things like that, that all that stuff's being taken into account. And how do we feel comfortable that all that's being taken into We're account. telling you it should be and it will be as far as we're concerned, but at the end of the day, when those values come out in the fall, if they're not, then you just say, you know what, you're wrong. I think you're still overvaluing me, and I'm abating this. I, 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 agree, I agree with that, but, you know, this we whole, can't, we can't the whole neighborhood classification matters yep. because when I go for an abatement, 
I'm going to be in a certain neighborhood, <coughs> right? So my comps are going to be based and on that neighborhood. It, so it, it does it, matter. Well, it, it, and if every and if a whole and if you come and bring comps and the comps are, are different and multiple people bring comps that are different and that means somewhere along the line that it didn't come out the right way then we have then we abate all of them okay um, someone did mention about errors and omissions can we see the contract with our uh, you sure it's, it's on way. file with the selectman's office it is we can we can go in there and see that yeah it's public document like someone I think I just have one more. Uh, someone did mention about when the mis when the mistake is corrected. Uh, can we see the the correction? Are you going to do that? Or are we just going to go back? Be your assessed value on your tax on the third on on right. at the end. So we're not going to go. He's not going to correct the mistake and see what it should have been. We're not going to do that. We're trying well, to the, the, the mistake was leaving a file active. Yeah, I know, but there had to be a correct answer at some point, right? Yeah, so will, the correct answer will be what your assessed value is. But you know, we're not going to what we're not. But at some point, if he left the file open, and I really don't understand that whole thing. I don't need to. But if he left the file open, he was doing some work, and it had it has to be. He had to correct that work, right? So. And that would have gave us. He was, I, I, I'm trying to give you that. He was writing a letter, and he got halfway through the letter, didn't finish it. We're waiting for him to finish it. That's my point. So it's, it's not like he he he, he did something. So he didn't finish it. He didn't finish it. No, that's what we've been okay. saying. Yeah, he didn't all right. finish it. That's all I have. Thank you. All right, Mr. Wall, you want to wrap us if up? I could indulge the chair one more time, uh, just to put out there. It's a lot of frustration. Understandable. Uh, applaud the board for stepping up, doing the right things. But moving forward, because you know I've been in constant contact since uh, with, with Senator Rodericks throughout this process of hearing from residents with issues. So we are both, whether it's the board or members of the public that do have these ideas that think they can, you know, that they maybe could fix this. I just want to say that we're always available. Call us, email us. My next office hours are 9.30 Monday mo morning next at the COA. So don't, I just don't want people to leave saying, you know, it's broken. If, if there's ideas that can fix it, we'll fix it. Norm, if there's something we think you can do to help us, we'll reach out. I know you will. So. All right, thank you. Thanks. All right, well, I appreciate everyone no, coming out. Uh, I can talk to you after. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm just trying to wrap it up. So yeah. I'm just gonna ask you a question. That's SACWA 305 Pond Lane. Um, in some of the states, they have the ability when you homestead your property and you hit a certain age that they start capping the taxes for those people. What would the process be for us to get that enacted? In Anything the like that would have to be the state. You probably want to ask them all about that. So and, it's and the yeah. state, it's not the town? Yeah, the town can't. Yeah. I, I, trust me, I, I've looked into more options for, and again, because I honestly, not that I think anybody should be in this situation but i'm empathetic towards and granted i've been in town a long time i mean there are people who bought properties on the ponds 30 40 years ago when you bought properties on the pond you couldn't afford to live in any place else and they're there now they're, the values have escalated and trust me we've been trying to figure out is is there a way to say listen can we do something for the seniors and then it's got to go statutorily to the state and if we accidentally sent out bills for a million dollars to everybody what would the process be to correct those bills? Well, it couldn't, because remember, when we set our budget at town meeting, that's the total amount we can collect. So if we sent out $500 million bills, the system wouldn't process them because it would be $500 million, which is over our budget. But 10 people would get that million dollar bill. Correct. So what would the process be? Well, it wouldn't work because everybody else wouldn't get a bill. Right, but what, what would the process be? to correct that tax bill that is wrong. I don't know, you'd have to ask the tax collector. Right, there, have, yeah. there has to be some sort of process of the printer printed added an extra zero. There's gotta be some process for saying the bill is uh, wrong. Look, trust me, if you can find something that we that we didn't uncover, let me know. It wasn't happening here, so. Just no one. Okay, thank you. Right. Having said that, any motion to new adjourn. business to come before the board? Oh. Any other business, old no. business? No. Motion to adjourn, please. Motion to adjourn. So, Seconded. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting is adjourned at 729.